All right. Okay. So, hello, dears. Okay. <laughs> hello, dears, and welcome to the continuation of our class um, on the microscopic exam of urine, and hopefully the last part na good. Uh, for this lecture, we're going to start first muna with the spermatozoa. All right. This was supposed to be included in the first part, pero nalimot ko na skip na ko siya. Actually, <laughs> pasensya na skip to side ko siya, no? <laughs> so, for sperm, of course, spermatozoa. Um, it's of course, especially in males. Uh, remember, in males, the urethra of males males have two or has two functions. Number one is to carry sperm or semen um, outside no, to ejaculate for fertilization purposes. And of course, number two, as a, a tube to carry urine from bladder to the outside world, <laughs> to the outside world. So therefore, it's not uncommon to see sperm in your urine, especially in males and even in females. So generally, whenever we see sperm, this is considered to be a contaminant, okay? Um, especially in males, all right? Pero there are some instances, such as in males, we have what we call retrograde ejaculation. So when we say retrograde ejaculation, instead ng semen mo adto sa gawas, mo balik siya sa bladder or mo siya sa bladder, retrograde, no? Pabalik, iyahang movement. It could be there's a problem in the muscles there sa urethra in the controlling of the ejaculation. Uh, another one is spermatorrhea. When you say spermatorrhea, there is excessive, no? Excessive release of semen even if without arousal or involuntary siya. So even if wala siya na na arouse, no? wala siya nag self-love or whatever man gani nag, na, na diligan, wala siya nagpadilig or nagdilig, okay? Um, ni produce lagi akong siya og uh, sperm or semen. So that's involuntary. That's what you call spermatorrhea. Now, it's very important to report your sperm, especially in females. No, Aside sa, we consider it as a contaminant because most of the time when sperm is seen in the urine of females, it could only mean one thing. Bago lang sila nag- Yes. Ayan. Bago na sila nagdiliganan sa each other. Bago na sila naghimaya sa langit. Ganun. Okay? Pero again, in a more serious note, of course, the presence of sperm in the urine of females often can indicate, of course, sexual abuse. Alright? And it's not uncommon also when you practice or when you go to your hospital assignments that you receive specimens for that. Alright? And what is really saddening is that majority of the specimens that you receive are coming from young female children okay um and it's really sad no um and it really happens um and makasad lang na makaguol na makalagot all right because majority pag yun are mga children mga ages 10 below or teenagers mga pre-adolescents no um mga 10 11 12 all right and then usually pag yun ang sexual abuse na hitabo siya um within the family ra. so trigger warning pala ha sorry sorry for those ano uh, trigger warning for this topic. Okay, pasensya. Nalimot ko butang sa disclaimer. But trigger warning, no content warning. Um, pero yes, no, that's a common um, that's a common um, incident, occurrence in your uh, hospital setting. Okay? So, whenever you receive specimen for that, okay, of course, you have to be very much careful and you treat it with respect for it. Okay? And be open-minded. Do not judge anything. No, open-minded rag na mag-process ka accurately and report what you see. Okay? And report yun as accurately as possible para maagapan agad-agad. Okay? Alright. Kay, um, and ayaw pong ipanabi, ha? Like, ayaw pong ipanabi na huy si ano kay nani. Don't. Okay? That's patient confidentiality. Alright? So, take note of that, dears. Okay. So, that's the importance of your spermatozoa. But generally, again, it is a contaminant. Okay? Um, again, when you see sperm in your urine, uh, we consider it as a contaminant. And it just usually indicates bago lang <laughs> nag, ano sila, you know, nag happy happy sana all charot <laughs> and nag ano nag himaya sa langit um and if in the urine you see motil sperm all right like it's really swimming or motil it indicates that it is a recent happening no it indicates recent intercourse or self love masturbation okay uh, because again sperm a uh, urine is not a conducive medium for sperm so if madugay ang sperm dito of course it will uh, die all right it will not be motel. So if you see motel sperm in your urine, it means um, bago lang, fresh, no early, very recent na happening. Okay, all right. So I have a friend no? <laughs> na mo yung gibuhat, buangon <laughs> sa mong lab sa una sa clean mic um, before me nagurin analysis for microscopic nag self love siya, no. Pero that was hours before. Pero na detect yapon sa ihi, no. <laughs> so hi nako my friend talaga. Anyway, ayan sige. So um uh yeah. So yung appearance of course, the normal appearance of your sperm tapered oval head and of course na eye tail. All right. 
And of course, we have a separate discussion on seminal fluid analysis after CSF pohon. Okay, kung kano sa mga ganit na, hopefully. All right, okay, so that's for uh, the sperm. All right, so ako lang gi-insert dears kayo, nalimot ko appeal sa first part. Pasensya. All right, now we go now to the main part of our discussion for today, and that is your <laughs> for casts. No, siya talaga ang, di rita mag-start supposed to be. So your casts actually are considered to be the unique talaga, unique sediment or unique formed element found in your urine, okay? Because it is the only element that can be uh, found in your urine because na, na, na specific talaga for the kidneys, okay? Because again, the casts can only be found in your urine, not in other body fluids because the casts are formed as a man, sa muhang kidneys, all right? So the presence of these casts in your urine could indicate that there is a pathologic or a condition that is affecting primarily your kidneys, especially the nephron, no? especially the tubules. All right? Okay. So, um, again, as someone are usually formed within the lumens, lumens of your distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. Okay. Take note of that. Now, what is the appearance? Of course, it's tubular. All right? It's cylindrical in shape and it is parallel iahang sides. Okay? Um, actually, because it takes into the shape or it takes the shape of the tubule kung asa siya na form. All right? Okay, so example, if tubule, di ba, distal convoluted, so kung hindi siya ma-form, of course, iyahang it take into consideration the shape of the tubule. So kung ang tubule kay niwang or narrow, the cast will also be narrow. If the tubule is wide, the cast will also be wide. If the tubule is convoluted, meaning na asya ka ng mga twists and turns, the cast will also be will have those twists and turns put. Because again, it follows the shape of the tubule. All right? And whatever cells, whatever bacteria, whatever constituents that may be found in the tubule can also be included or incorporated into the cast. And this can indicate the possible condition, possible disease that the patient's kidneys are experiencing. Okay? All right, all right. Now, what is the main composition of your... Um, Cast is, of course, your TAM horse fall protein, also known as your urumodulin. All right? This is the matrix protein which is normally produced, okay? Normally produced by your RTE cells. So, RTE cells, renal tubular epithelial cells. So, it is normally excreted at a constant rate. Pero during cases of, let's say, exercise, strenuous activities, the excretion rate of urumodulin can increase. That's why it's, it's normal to see mga casts after having an exercise or strenuous activities. But after cessation of exercise or the strenuous activity, then of course the casts will uh, will will disappear from the urine. Okay? Now, kinsa ganito, manawag na po tabi. Sige, be. Wala yung manglibha, sinasabi ko sa inyo. Alright, Jev, dears, nandiyan ka ba? Pakigalawang so, baso. Sir, sir. Okay, I love it. Jeff, kisa ganitong other sediments sa urine na iyahang main composition kay urumodulin. Kinsa man? Kinsa man? Sir, wala ko balo siya. <laughs> Kinsa man? Ang other normal, usually normal. Okay? Sige. Adrian, yes. Kuala Fred, may mga, may mga naghahamon. Aba-aba. Adrian, yes. Thanks, Kinsa guys. Man? Kinsa man to, <laughs> Kinsa man to Mucus, sir. Mucus. 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 Okay. Mucus. 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 <laughs> okay. Eldrick, yes. Ano siya answer? Mucus, Ay, Fred, sir. Okay, very good. Mucous threads. Sige, Lou J, since nag-raise makaghan, so sa may nabay significance ang mucous threads or wala? Wala, sir. Sure? Sure. Okay. Agree mo sa answer ni Lou J? Wala ba siya significance ang mucous threads? Yes, sir. Gen Z? Yes. Okay, Matini? Yes, agree? Okay. Final answer? Itatayan yung score niyo sa CM dito? <laughs> okay. Guys. <laughs> Sige. Dance, yes. Nakay gigiris. Matini, yes. Unsa man yung answer. Dili daw. Unsa man mat unsa man yung matini. Sige. It can be an indication of inflammation or irritation of the urinary tract, sir. Okay. So, when man ka makaingo na possible na indicator siya. Kung? <laughs> if, if na ano siya yung WBC. Nakauban. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. So, yeah. I'll accept that. No? Chakto, no? Generally, tama din naman, it's really non-pathologic, no? But if abundant, ayan, abundant iyahang number, daghan kayo siya, it could point, no? Possibly point to an infection or inflammation in the urinary tract. 
pack. Ba, nakaprepare ang mga iba dito, ha? Sinasabi ko talagang galing-galing, ha? <laughs> Wala, di man should, ano, ha? Di li magpalupeg. Naghahamon. Okay, sige. Sige, well, ato nang i-maintain, charot. Sige. Okay, <laughs> sige. So, that's for our uromodulin. Tama, no? Mucous threads also contain uromodulin. Alright, that's why it's normal. Because again, your um, uromodulin is consistently produced at a constant rate by your RTEs. Alright, sige. Now, what's the clinical significance of this cast? No, ano man di ay. Of course, remember that the casts are formed within the tubules of the kidneys. So the presence of casts in your urine could only indicate that there could be again a problem. There could be a pathologic condition. Basi na ay problema na nahita bo sa muhang tubules. Right? That's the importance of it. It's more on assessing talaga the tubules. All right? Tubular integrity and the nephron overall din naman because the tubules are part of the nephron. Okay? Now again, it is made up of protein. It's the matrix protein uromodulin and this protein will gel or mo aggregate sila during mga cases of increased urinary stasis, meaning na ay paghinto, na ay pagpundo sa ihi, na ay um, wala dayo na paggawa sa ihi sa mong tubules, na ay possible condition dito, obstruction, no? increased urinary stasis. Another one is increased pH, uh, increased acidity, all right, which would again facilitate the aggregation of your protein and lastly the presence of increased solutes such as your sodium and calcium because this can be incorporated into the cast matrix all right remember that now again take note that casks are medyo heavy no medyo bug at sila so therefore pag examine mo there's a possibility that these casks can be um can be thrown away it can disperse ayan it can disperse to the sides of the cover slip so for scanning purposes we scan using lpo all right we scan using lpo and then we look at the sides okay we look at the sides and we look for the possible uh, appearances or presence of casts kay mga casts possible na adid to kay heavy sila so pag butang nimo sa cover slip possible na ni flow sila padulong dito okay all right now we have this parang um um sister charot parang ano siya doppelganger ni casts which are your cylindroids now your cylindroids are actually um they resemble casts, but instead of having, di ba, ang casts kay cylindrical, ayan, complete sila, rounded ends or pwedeng blunt ends. Ang imuhang uh, cylindroids, you have one rounded end, pero ang imuhang end, pika's end kay medyo taper. Ganyan. Alright. So, na siya yung tail, no? Taper. It tapers out like a mucus. Alright. Pero, both of them, the cast and the cylindroids, they have the same significance. So, if you see both of them, you report it the same, no? It has the same significance. And, it's and it is believed that your cylindroids are actually casts na wala ra na human og form because kulang og time. Okay? So cylindroids, no? Again, are incomplete na casts. No, wala sila na form completely because of uh, kulang na time. O, di ba? Ganun. Kung kulang ang time lagi, charat. Ayan. Okay, sige. Therefore, the presence of your casts in your urine is termed as cylindruria. Alright, take note of that. Cylindruria. Okay, sige. Next, you have again as a makitaan imuhang mga different casts and cylindroids. You have a drawing there. Again, number one, you have here the cylindroid. Asa siya makitaan sa ascending loop of Henle and sa distal convoluted tubule. As you can see again, tapered in one end. All right, mura siyang naiikog. Right, it's not a complete cast. Whereas for your cast, as you can see, sa DCT and collecting ducts. All right, so as you can see. Complete yun siya na uh, cylindrical, no? rounded ends or blunt yahang edges. Now take note, remember, one of the factors na nung form og cast is because of high pH, uh, high acidity, sorry, and high concentration. Now remember, di ba, in your renal function na to na discussion, asa man na site, di ba, sa kidneys mahitabo ang final concentration of your urine, asa dapita, sa imuhang collecting ta. Collecting duct and sa DCT. Take note of that. So therefore, it's only reasonable or it's only kanang murag understandable nga nung dito ma-form ang mga cast. Because remember that in those areas of the kidneys or in the nephron, no, um, dito ma hitabo ang highest concentration and the most acidic po na part sa ihi. Kaya di ba dito man makontrol ang different concentrations sa imong urine. So it's really reasonable and understandable nga nung ang casts ma-form dito ng dapita sa mong DCT and collecting duct. Nagets lang? All right. Okay. Whew. Ayan. Sige. Padayon ta. All right. Sige. Next, we go now to how our casts form. All right. So again, mudrotag tubule daw. Let's say sa DCT ni siya. All right. Now, we mentioned again that RTE is constantly produced at a constant rate by the 
RTE, sorry, the uromodulin pala, sorry, is produced at a constant rate by your RTE. Now remember that the renal tubular epithelial cells, nasa pangalan na, these are cells that line the tubules of your renal, of the nephron, okay? Now of course, they produce your protein, let's say, muna siya, uromodulin. Okay? Alright. Uromodulin daw na siya. Diyos, pasensya akong drawing, ha? Ayan. Tapos, of course, in, cre in cases of increased urinary stasis, uh, acidic ang environment, et, et cetera, what happens is, of course, or increase in muhang strenuous activity, exercise, so, more uromodulin is going to be produced, and what happens is, mag-aggregate sila. Magtapot. Alright? Aggregate. Aggregate. Ayan. Aggregate. What happens after aggregation, they form what we call an interweaving fibril of network, uh, networks of protein. And magpadayo na sila form of interweaving na mga fibril. Alright? And of course, remember kaning fibril, mura siyag mesh, no? mura siyag net. Okay? So this net, of course, will capture whatever cells, bacteria, constituents that may be found in your tubules. So ma-appeal ma to mga RBCs, if naman gani, mga WBCs, no? Tapos bacteria, alright? Ma-appeal sila dira. Depende kung unsay sulod ani na time sa muhang tubule. So after some time of course, this will detach, okay? I let go na siya sa muhang tubule, all right? And muni siya ang mahimong cast, okay? So that's the formation of your cast. Okay? I hope na gets lang, no? So it starts of course with uromodulin, aggregate sila, form interweaving fibrils, okay? Until they form the matrix and then kung unsa may possible constituents na as a tubule at that time, RBCs, WBCs, bacteria, they may also be incorporated into the cast matrix and after some time of course the cast matrix or the cast already will detach no from the tubules and will be expressed in your urine okay now there is also what we call the order of cast degeneration so meaning kinsa man mag start and then unsa yung pinaka last stage all right so of course the first stage of all casts regardless kung sa na type is of course the hyaline no the hyaline cast is actually the beginning the alpha and omega ganern no in the beginning there was a hyaline cast ganern okay so siya gyud ang start siya ang prototype meaning siya dira gyud siya mag begin no dira gyud siya mag start tanan tanan okay because remember that your hyaline cast diba it's only made of uromodulin so it's really clear no wala say any cellular inclusion it's plainly made of your um Uromodulin, all right? Then of course, pag agi niya sa different tubules, all right? Pag agi niya sa different tubules, pwede na siyang maka-attach or maka-attract or maka-incorporate og other mga cells. So therefore, the next stage there, as you can see, is cellular. Depending on the cells na pwedeng makasulod. Pwedeng RBC, pwedeng WBC, pwedeng RTE, pwedeng bacteria, etc. And of course, after which, no? After some time, after some time, good, long periods of time, the cells inside your cast will degenerate. Meaning, mga guba sila, no? They will destroy, they will lyse, of course, they, bega, they become first coarsely granular. Remember, these cells are quite big, no? Sa mga RBCs, epithelial cells. So, pag disintegrate nila, of course, ilang appearance kay medyo coarse. That's why, unang uh, granular cast na ma-form is the coarsely granular. Now, long periods of time pag yun, after some time, these coarse granules will be disintegrated na po, and they will now form, or they will now become finely granular. So, una ang coarse before finely granular. Because the coarse granules will continue to disintegrate. So, mga wala na itong mga dagko na granules, ang mabili na lang kay katong mga gagmay. So, fine granules. And then lastly, uh, the last stage is of course, those granules will further disintegrate until ang maproduce na lang kay ang waxy cast. So, balik na po siya sa homogenous na appearance, pero this time, medyo, ano na siya, medyo highly refractile, no? Uh, medyo, ano na siya, medyo na na siya color because of the different cells na nakasulod, uh, na na-disintegrate, and the different pigments na ilang na-produce and all that. So, the last part is your waxy cast. So, I hope na gets ra to. So, it starts with hyaline, followed by cellular, and then of course, the cells inside the cellular cast will disintegrate, okay? And they will become degenerating cellular, the generating cellular will become, of course, coarse granular, and then coarse granules will become fine, and then fine, finally, mahimong wax. All right? So that's the last stage no, of the order of cast degeneration. So I hope na gets right to siya. All right? Whew. Again, you kutasan ko, dear Char. I need to, I need exercise, Charot. Okay, sana naman dito COVID. <laughs> Lord, my God. Okay, sige. Now we go now to the different uh, classification of cast. So this is from Brunzel, dear so, sa Brunzel, you divide siya into different major categories. Number one is those casts with homogeneous matrix, meaning smooth yung appearance, wala siya any inclusion. Of course, we have two. You have hyaline and 
Puwaksi. Next, of course, the different inclusions na. Cellular inclusions or other inclusions. You have, again, mga cells, pwede pong crystals, pwede mga granules, mga fats, no? And of course, you have those that are pigmented, meaning naka-absorbs like pigment brought about by um, intense, you know, hemolysis or whatever, such as bilirubin, hemoglobin, or myoglobin. And lastly, for size, we only have one, which is your broad. Okay, so broad. Ayan. Okay, so that's for the classification. So this is from Brenzel Deers. No? So namutan ako sa akong mga friends who recently took the board exam. So i-ask ko nila, unsa may mga recalls, no? When you say recalls, di ba, mga questions sa boards na ilang na-remember. Ganon, recalls. Unsa may mga recalls kay for CM, clean mic. So ano sila na, nakalimot na daw sila. <laughs> because, um, nalimta na nila because lisod daw ang CM. So, um, most of the time, ang good, um, Muragi na take for granted lagi ng CM, histopath, kay mga 10% lang lagi sila kay minor subjects. So, ang tendency kay dili na magtuon, dili na mag maningkamot, no? but that 10% can really make or break your percentage sa board exam. no So, you have to make the effort yun. Bahala di ka ganan sa histopath like me, kailangan yun dyan puto mo effort. Okay? So, Ayan. So, for CM, that's getting more challenging. Okay? So, dagana daw kayong analysis, dagana mga case studies. During my time sa akong board exam sa CM, ako ma-remember lang is na ay case study dito, urine analysis, and then case study, and then mga three to four questions afterward. So, gi-ask to, asa di ka ng epithelial cells, is it a contaminant, is it significant, mga ganun na mga questions. Nalimot na ko sa specific. And ako dung, ako dung dili malimtan is katong grading sa semen. No, katong viscosity, zero watery, four gel-like. Nako, ato nang, <laughs> ato nang i-emphasize when we go to semen. No? Zero watery, four gel-like. Twice na siya nigawa sa akong boards. No? Uh, number one is, what is the grading for zero watery? Once I grading sa gel-like, four. So, zero watery, four gel-like. So, muna ko mga ma-remember sa CM. Pero, for me, ato, I think na time, it was partly okay. No? Um, pero, medyo challenging gapon siya. Pero, generally, sa akong board exam sa two days, ang histopath yun akong murag Anak ko na, shucks, where as na manigi ka ng mga question, mga ganong level, no? Pero, for CM, as I mentioned, no, anak kong friend na majority daw of the questions are coming from Branzel. Ayan, na book. B-R-U-N-Z-E-L. So, pag-ingon niya ato, pag-ingon niya ato, I was quiet parang relief, no? Na-relief ko kaya I'm I'm using that book to make your notes, okay? And kina ko mga additional gipang-ingon po, it's from Branzel and Graf po, no? Kay majority of the notes na uh, information na nasa yung notes there sa Strasinger na siya gikan. Alright? So, of course, we have to look at other references. Kay Muhang Board of Examiner, yes, medyo ugmasipag sila. <laughs> Mangita gina sila mga bagong questions, okay? So, tigamit na sila sa Branzel and sa Graf. So, I'm happy lang to be, I'm relieved lang kay I'm using Branzel Pud for your lectures and for your notes. So, at least we're in the right track, baby. We were born this way. Amen. All right? Okay. So that's for classification. Daming chika no about lang Brenzel. But again, at least majority of the tables, the readers na kong ginabutang, you can agree sa Brenzel. Because again, uh, Strasinger, na naman may Strasinger, gas, gas na, gas, gas na, very, ano na nato ng Strasinger. Try na po tag-explore other books. Okay? All right. Anyway, that's for the classification of the different casts. Of course, we'll now start with the first one, your hyaline cast. All right. Now, as we have mentioned, hyaline cast is considered to be the prototype. All right? The beginning of everything, no? In the beginning, there was a hyaline cast. Okay? Siya yun ang pinaka una, no? So, sa tanang types of cast na pwedeng makuha na to or ma-recover from urine, the first part yun o nanggikan yun na sila sa hyaline cast. Alright? So, it's the prototype and the beginning of all types of casts. And as I have mentioned, di ba, during strenuous activities exercise, there could be increased production of your uromodulin. And uromodulin, di ba, is the main component yun of hyaline cast. It's the only component yun found in your hyaline cast. Okay? So, therefore, it's normal to see um, few, less than two, mga less than two per HPF, high pa, uh, for, per low power, sorry, per low power field of hyaline Cast. So it's normal, no? It's normal. Okay. And when you stain it with Sternheimer Malbin, take note, it's color pink. So there was a question, I think, in the boards. Ang um, question ato kay, uh, using the Kova stain, ayan, using the Kova stain, what is the color of your hyaline cast? So when you say Kova stain, diba, we have mentioned that the Kova stain is a brand of Sternheimer Malbin. So take note of that. So therefore, yahang color is color 
pink. Okay, kahang pink, yes. All right, okay. Now, for clinical significance, of course, physiologic, no? As mentioned, because lang of different strenuous activities such as stress, no? And strenuous exercise. Because again, of increased production of uromodulin. Pathologic, of course, you have glomerulonephritis, pyelonephritis, and of course, congestive heart failure. Actually, your hyaline cast, dears, it's, it does not point to a to one disease only because in any kidney disease or renal disease you can see you can probably see a hyaline cast because understandable din naman kay siya man ang prototype cast no so pwede gyud siya makitan kay dira man nag nagstart tanan okay dira nagstart tanan okay all right so pero take note lang dears asa pa siya makitan congestive heart failure so for congestive heart failure possible na there is already disruption in your protein balance no uh, there is mga fluid build up and all that which can contribute to the formation of cast now take note dears, Ayan, sa picture, di ba? Medyo di siya klaro. Ayan. That's why it is considered to have a low refractive index. It's entirely composed of protein. That's why medyo lisod siya makitaan if hayag kayo muhang suga. So the best way to examine this type of cast or in microscopic yod is dapat low imuhang light. Okay? Subdued light para dili ni mamiss, no? In ani na mga structures. Kay dili good kayo sila makitaan, no? Kay low ilang refractive index, they may blend in the background. So, dili siya makita. Okay? Alright. Now, there are some instances na yung hyaline cast na yung mga nakatapot na one or two RBCs or one or two na mga epithelial cells, it's still considered a hyaline cast. Pero kung daghan na ganit kaayo ang na to, then that's another type of cast na. It's not considered to be a hyaline cast. But if majority pag kay clear, no? O wala kay makitang other inclusions, then that is still considered a hyaline cast cast okay and is the most commonly observed cast in your urine all right the most commonly observed cast in your urine okay all right sige okay wait sabi ano sa tie breaker mm sama na kong atla ha tulan tawon sa mag check sa kung mga tawo all right let us see danika na diyan ka na ba <laughs> then <laughs> Last meeting, gitawag tika, wala ka nito bag. Then, natulog na po ka din. Then, <laughs> pakigalaw ang baso din. <laughs> wala pa din. Okay. Sige. Si... Uh... Then, grabe na din ha. Malapit na matapos ang set. Ay, pugot katulgi din. Charot. Mati ni, ikaw na lang. Okay, Matt. Sir, <laughs> nauman ako, sir. Sige, sige, good. Okay. Um, Sheila, dears, nandiyan ka ba? Pakigalaw ang baso. Sir, na sir, pero oh my God. <laughs> Question lang, no? Review lang. What is the principle of your glucose uh, reagent strip? Bisa sir, word double, se double sequential enzymatic reaction. Okay, very good. Alright, sige. What can be added in your pad? para mawala ang interference sa yung ascorbic acid. Sheila pa rin. <laughs> Naging nagnilip si Den. Den, pa saan? Sir, nalako, sir. Nalako, sir. Sir, i-save daw ko ni Den, sir. Okay. Den, i-save daw, i -save daw ni mo si Sheila. Ang question ako, Den. <laughs> what, what can be added in your reagent pad, bahalag sa glucose, sa blood, para mawala ang interference sa yung ascorbic acid? <clears throat> Oh my God. Um, Prayers. <laughs> That's a man there. Sige, try lang. Review rata sa itong mga na-discuss para ano na, prepared na sa oral revalida. Sige. Acetic acid. Wait, acetic acid? <laughs> acetic acid. Okay, sige. Thank you for that, Den. Uh, Nay mo agree Rata. or mo disagree. <laughs> Thank you, Den. Sige. Kinsa, unsa matong pwede na itong maad sa itong reagent strip pad? Especially for blood, for glucose. Those that can be affected by your ascorbic acid para mawalang interference. Yes, Jev? Iodate, sir. Okay, very good. Ang galing. Iodate. That's good. Very good. Okay, marito siya. Mga pop-up questions. Okay? Sige, we'll continue. <laughs> prepare, prepare. Iba dyan. Okay, sige. Now, we go na to your RBC cast. Ayan, okay. So, by the name itself, RBC cast, this is a cast. No, that contains RBCs. <laughs> so from hyaline, no, na, na incorporate ang mga RBCs. All right? And what is the importance? What is the clinical significance of this? The presence of your RBC cast indicates bleeding. Ayan. Bleeding within the nephron. Understandable. Very reasonable. Cast. 
produced by your tubules na apadre RBCs na nakitan daghan kaayo so it could only mean na naadre ga bleed sa sulod sa imuhang nephron okay and generally usually it is caused by glomerular bleeding all right most of the time i'm not saying that it's the only cause because of course your nephron na pay other tubules so possible na dito gikan ang bleeding pero generally majority it's caused by glomerular damage all right now again for rbc casts these rbcs after a long period of time pwede siyang mo disintegrate pwede mo lice and of course pwede niyang ma-express ang hemoglobin sa imong cast and once this happens your cast will uh, be colored yellow brown no or muddy brown and once this happens katod siya na cast it's already called a blood cast or a hemoglobin cast or a muddy brown cast dili na siya called RBC cast. Basta wala na kayo makita ang mga RBC sa sulod, makakita na lang kag homogenous na color brown na matrix, then that is your hemoglobin, muddy brown, or blood cast. Okay? So what is again the clinical significance? Wala nang iba, of course, glomerulo nephritis. Okay? Glomerulo nephritis, of course, there is glomerular involvement na possible na damage. Okay? Alright? And aside from that, it can also be seen in strenuous exercise especially those that um, involve contact uh, sports no such as boxing basketball or football because there could be possible injuries no ginagmay to your um there is abdomen or sa kung asa man gani, which can cause no the introduction of rbc's to your urine and of course intrinsic renal disease na a possible uh, problem na good not only in the glomerulus but also in the other parts of your nephron okay all right now um okay all right. Okay, sige. Now, in the presence of massive hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria, again, uh, these kato mga dirty brown casts, pwede na siya makita dito. All right? And it's usually associated with acute tubular necrosis caused by the toxic effects of your myoglobin. All right? And even hemoglobin. So, if ever makakita ka o mga dirty brown casts, all right, kato atong gimension, it could be that there is a massive hemolysis, no? There is myoglobin production, all right? Uh, and this can be attributed to acute tubular necrosis because myoglobin, diba, and even hemoglobin to some extent uh, is toxic to your tubules. All right. Okay. And when you stain RBC casts uh, by using your Sternheimer Malbin Dearsts, the intact RBCs may be color colorless or lavender, but the matrix itself is co is color pink. So na mention as a first part sa lecture Dearst, kato mga summary of colors using Sternheimer Malbin of different sediments. So Try your best to familiarize those. Okay, nandiyan po yung mga questions na inana. All right? Okay, so that's for RBC casts. Sige. So since we're talking about blood, another question. Okay. Sige. Let us see. Nika, dear. Diyan ka pa ba? <laughs> Mag-leave lagi. Ayun mo, pangit naman ka banding. <laughs> Nika. Sir, kay Sheila ako mag-talk. Kay Hinay ako ah? mag Okay, sige, no prob. Sige. So, Nick, di ba, um, hemoglobin and myoglobin can be detected by your reagent strip. Am I right? Yes, sir. Wait. Agree? Or mas dili sila ma-detect? Ang hemoglobin na ba yung ma-detect? Or myoglobin na ba? Do you mean, sorry, glue ko? I wait. Blood, blood, blood. Kalma lang. <laughs> blood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mas strong lagi. Ma ma ano lagi? Sige. For blood, ha, blood. Can it detect both or either lang? Ma detect. Either, either na guys sir. Either, okay, all right. That is correct, no? So pweding silang duha. All right, so give me one method lang. How we how we could differentiate if ang cause ba sa red or sa yahang urine is hemoglobin or myoglobin? Kato mo magkano? Ammonium sulfate sir. Ano yung kasi? Ah, Blandheim's test ba to? Okay. The Blandheim's test. Why red nga precipitate? Ang more red nga okay. precipitate kay it is the hemoglobin while right. the red nga supernatant kay ang myoglobin. Okay. Very good. Kaya unsay it follows the principle that Kung ano ko bala sa principle sa test sir. <laughs> okay, very good. That's correct. Sige, that's correct. Very good. The Blandheim's test. Thank you. I didn't sir, ang principle niya kay katong katong heavier nga kuan maoy mo precipitate. Takto ba sir? Which is Ang hemoglobin mo o siyang okay. mo yung Very good. Okay. Very good, Nick. I love it. Thank you. That's good. Ernst, yes. Ni-raise kasi mong hand. What is the other method para ma-distinguish na to? If hemoglobin ba or myoglobin? 
<laughs> Nawala si Ernst. <laughs> yes. Sir, katurang uh, first method ng Laval answer. <laughs> Katong Blanheims. <laughs> and so my second way, second na to. Yes, uh, Van Vanessa, sige. Pwede po electrophoresis, sir. Pwede electrophoresis. Very good. That's the definitive test. Very good. What is the other one pag yun? Itong number one and nasa table. <laughs> sige. Napako yun. Wala na yun. And then, sige, then. Then? <laughs> Nansa man, then. Nansa man itong number one method na to. We can. Nansa man ito pwedeng i-observe. Ayan. Uh, um, plasma, sir. Okay. Plasma. Nansa man yung mga expected na itong result sa plasma. Um, clear ang um, clear ang plasma sa my globin tapos red dish sa, sa hemoglobin nga naman eh may kanang uh, kai <laughs> ang hemoglobin naman <laughs> patay tayo dito uh, kasi <laughs> continue yung heme char sa <laughs> yung color red ah <laughs> uh, why man nga naman um hmm teka lang ha Siguro mas dako ang hemoglobin kaysa sa myoglobin kaya medyo, medyo prominent yung pagka-red. Ah, oh, shucks. Ewan ko lang, sir. Pwede. Alright. Pero I can take that. Pero yes, Feli. Unsa may ato ang reasoning for that? Feli. Oo, oh, oh, ikaw, Feli. Answer. Fel. <laughs> uh, myoglobin, yeah. sir, is clear because it is rapidly um, clear in the plasma, sir. So, clear siya compared sa hemoglobin. Nga red lang siya. Very good. Okay, that is correct. No, thank you. Your myoglobin is rapidly cleared from the plasma by the kidneys. That's why a muhang plasma kay clear sa myoglobin, whereas your hemoglobin, again, medyo dugay siya. It could be due to the dako na weight. Mas dako weight si hemoglobin compared to myoglobin, which is dimension ni Den. So, very good. Take note of that, dear sa Baka lumabas yung mga oral revalida. So, Make sure again, as I as I have emphasized, try your best to explain it in English because na iba sa ibang CI na particular on that. Pero for me, dili era, no? Pero as much as possible, try to explain it in English. Okay? Very good. Okay. Oh, di ba? Para okay, practice sir. the gears. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Fel. And to the rest who answered. Okay. All right. That's for uh, the RBC cast. Okay? So, of course, for RBC cast, dears, if na RBC cast, so makakita po kag possible na mga RBCs. One of the ways para ma-determine mo kung unsay possible constituents sa imuhang cellular cast is you look at the surroundings. Okay? So example here, kung makakita kag mga free-floating RBC sa kilid, then most probably this is an RBC cast. Kay possible na pagtangtang or pagawa sa ihi na nga disintegrate or na nga detach tong ubang RBCs, that's why makita siya sa kilid sa imuhang cast. So one of the ways to identify no the identity of your cellular casts, you look at the surrounding. no You look at the surrounding cells sa imuhang cast. So if daghang WBCs niya na kay cast possible na WBC cast na siya. If daghang RBCs, okay? And then uh daghang RBC surrounding the cast, then possible that's an RBC cast. Aside from that, you can also correlate with your other um re urinalysis results, especially sa chemical. So there will be a positive blood here. There could be also positive sa protein, proteinuria because of uh, glomerular damage, no? Um yeah, mga inana. All right? So you have to correlate. As I've mentioned, the three parts of urinalysis are all interrelated with one another. All right. Okay. Now we go now to your WBC cast. So WBC cast is just same as RBC cast, but the difference lang is that instead of RBCs, you have the WBCs. All right? And the presence of your WBC casts indicates inflammation or even infection within the nephron. All right? But it can be mistaken as your RTE cell cast. If I remember sa first part sa microscopic, if nakalantaw na, one of the identification errors of your WBCs is your RTEs because medyo same sa nag-appearance, ilahang nucleus, medyo center gamay, and then the size matters. Kaya mas dako ang RTE compared sa WBCs. So how you differentiate? Of course, you look at the face contrast using face contrast microscopy para mas maklaro, di ba, ang mga internal structures. Aside from that, you use supravital stains, no, such as toluidine blue, which can really um, help stain the nucleus of your, um, the nuclei, no, of your uh, neutrophils, WBCs. For WBC cast, majority ang sulod ani is neutrophils. Alright? And of course, the major, major clinical significance of your um, WBC cast is pyelonephritis. And true enough, dears, the presence of this WBC cast in your urine differentiates, okay, your lower UTI, such as your cystitis, urethritis, from upper UTI, such as pyelonephritis. Nephritis, diba? Very understandable, very reasonable. The presence of WBC casts, diba, indicates that there is 
involvement of the nephron or the tubules. So therefore, pag makakita ka WBC cast sa imuhang ihi, makathink ka na, ah, okay, may possible infection sa imuhang kidneys. Because remember that in your cystitis, sa bladder lang siya, lower UTI, di ba? Lower UTI lang siya. So walay mga tubules ditong dapita sa nephron. So therefore, walay casts na ma-form. So sa lower UTI, maka-expect ka na walay WBC cast. So take note of that dear sa akong gina-emphasize. Baka lumabas sa mga case studies ninyo, mga exam. Pag lato mo sa results, pak, na WBC cast. Daghang WBCs, daghang bacteria. Nako, wag na mag-isep. Press the buzzer agad-agad. Pag nakakita ka na na results, mag-praise the Lord po ka and mag-praise the buzzer kapag kahuman. O, di ba? Para <laughs> maka-answer ka agad-agad. And the answer there would be pyelonephritis. Nako, my God, nako, very, ano na yun. O, makakita ko na na question, wala na yun mag, muluhod na lang dyug ko. Charat, okay. Ayan. Next, we have um, another significance is acute interstitial nephritis. Okay, so you can, a very easy question lang. Um, ito po may wala mga na, ano ba? Alisa. Ay, ayo ra, unyara ka, dears. Ayaw na lang sa. <laughs> Darlene, dears. Ayan, sige. Darlene. Darlene, nandiyan ka ba? Okay, <laughs> sige. Alright. Interstitial nephritis. Acute interstitial nephritis. What is this pathognomonic or very predominant WBC found in this type of disease? Now, if makakita ka ani, makathink ka na, ah, okay, the patient may have acute interstitial nephritis. Ano sa mato na WBC? PMN, sir. PMNs? Okay. Yes, Polymorpho? Okay, sige. Do you agree, ah? Napailay mo answer. Polymorpho ba? Ingrid, wow, yes. On sa mga answer day, Ingrid. Dili day po, PMNs. Sir, mo answer na ko kayo na kuyawan ako diri. On sa mga, on sa mga. Ko answer, eosinophils. Okay, eosinophils. Tama. Ari ba lahat na eosinophils? Okay. Vanessa, agree ka ba? Yes, sir, agree. Eosinophils. Okay, all right. Okay, sige. And that is correct. Okay, take note, dears. Basta ganit case studies. Ako na na po. Case studies, exams, mugawas. Increased urinary eosinophils. Nako. Lantawa rin ang choices. Kung na-interstitial nephritis, press the buzzer agad-agad. Samot na, kayong on drug-induced. Nako. My gosh. Okay? Press the buzzer agad-agad. Okay? Very good. Take note of that. Now, ang difference lang, dears, for acute interstitial nephritis, the acute interstitial nephritis, walay bacteria, wala po eh, WB, ah, walay, walay bacteria, take note of that. Because remember, the pathology of your acute interstitial nephritis, it is caused by allergic reaction of the tubules to a drug, usually penicillin or other drugs, and even other agents. And di ba, usually mga allergies, kinsa may WBCs na taas, you have eosinophils, alright? Pero wala siya bacteria. That's why there is increase in WBCs in um, interstitial nephritis, pero wala bacteria. And this is termed as sterile leukocyturia. Take note, sterile leukocyturia. Taas yung WBCs, pero wala bacteria na nakita. Sterile leukocyturia. Okay? Alright. Asa na makitaan? Acute interstitial nephritis. Okay. Alright. Kalawa na good mood, dears. I don't know pang leave kung mo-ask kung mga, you know, questions. So, you know, like, pati naman ka-banding. Okay? Alright. Sige. I don't know ka-hadlock. Okay? So, kay, kung order na balida na ba face-to-face, di na mo ka-leave. Kung saan naman na, di ba? So, you have to face your fears. And this time, ako yung yung fear. Okay? Alright. So, kalma na good. I don't judge. Okay na good. Everyone is open to share their ideas and answers. Alright? So, I highly suggest, yung mga question, na ako yung questions in your dears, again, try mo to answer. Para ma-practice mo. Okay? Especially pag-abot na sa oral revalida. Hapit na raba. Okay? Alright, sige. Now, the next is, of course, your RTE cell cast. So, as you can see, ang RTE cell cast, medyo same ragit siya appearance sa mukhang WBCs. But take note that the RTE cells are much larger compared to your WBCs. Now, kano siya siya makita? Of course, when there is possible damage na to the tubules. So, tubular necrosis, no? Renal tubular necrosis. Aside from that, uh, which is caused by possible exposure to nephrotoxic agents, no? Mga heavy metals, no? Certain medications, and even viral infections. Kinsa man ang mga viruses, you have CMV and hepatitis virus. Alright. Now, um, it's again, because it denotes no tubular injury, it's actually a non-specific marker of tubular injury. Alright. Now, the clinical significance, of course, it's pointing to the tubules. Advanced tubular destruction or renal tubular damage. Okay? Alright. Sige. 
All right, so that's for RTE cell cast. As you can see, the RTE cells can be stained. Example, there is a tunga, no bilirubin stain. Remember that um, when high concentrations such as bilirubin, no, uh, they can fil they can be filtered by the glomerulose. But of course, this bilirubin will be um, will be reabsorbed. Some of them will be reabsorbed by your tubules. So therefore, possible na mas stain imuhang RTE cells by your bilirubin. That's why pwede siyang ma bile stain, all right? Bilirubin stained na RTE cell. Cell cast. Okay, so possible siya maka acquire of different pigments. Okay, in this case, bilirubin, if taas ka ayo yahang, um, <laughs> if taas ka yahang content of bilirubin. All right, now as you can see, pwede siyang yahang arrangement, there's pwede siyang in ani, na straight line yud, no? Kanang order yud ka ayo, orderly yahang pag arrange. Pwede po siyang in ani, half a hazard, dili siya in one straight line, bisag asa makitan. All right. Now it's postulated na katu mga agikan sa straight line or parallel rows, uh, they are from the same segment of the tubule. And if if haphazard or meaning from katung dif dili siya single row or parallel rows, it could mean nagikan siya from different portions of the tubule. All right. So again, kung parallel rows siya, pares ani nasa right. Okay. Kani. So it could indicate nagikan siya sa same portion of the tubule. Pero if kung inaani siya, all right, nakanang ga, ga, ga sibula agba, wala siya nag, wala siya nag, wala siya nag follow og one straight line, then this is considered coming from different portions of the tubule. All right. Okay. Sige. Hmm. So mato pa naman ask. Charat. Okay. Sige. Ah, okay. Sige. Very easy question lang. Video. Okay. Um, very easy. So I put it. Hmm. Ganang kayo mang leave. Baka na yung stand their ground. Bahalag na question. Okay, sige. Jasha Dears. Ayan, sige. Ah, si Jasha Dears, sukad second year until now. Nastudyante yun ako. Josh, nandiyan ka pa ba? Sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hepatitis viruses, dears, which of the hepatitis viruses can be transmitted fecal orally? Ako, very easy. Kinsa man, among the... Pila man mga hepatitis virus, mga seven. Kinsa man itong mga ano na to? Matransmit through fecal oral. Yeah, sure, sir. Sige. Try lang. Sige. Ano sa to, Josh? Hepatitis A, alright. Napailain or maura? Uh, <laughs> okay. Hepatitis Letter A. Letter E, sir. Letter E. Okay. Final or napailain? Maulang, sir. Maura. Final. Okay. Sige. Agree? Fecal orally transmitted hepatitis viruses. You have A and E. Agree ba ang tanan or na ay laing mo try o ano answer? Agree? Then, wah, nagahabon si Dan ha, grabe. Wala gini siya na, di nagini siya katulog ko. Sige namang raise ug hand. Then? <laughs> joke lang sir, mawi ko sa kaya nagkatulog ko last. Ay, joke wala mo. Mao ka? Wala mo nagkatulog sir. <laughs> so, agree ka? Ano siya? A. Okay. A ra? A ra ko a ra mo ha. Okay, sige. So, si Jasha, A and E. Tapos si Danica, letter A. Hepatitis A ra daw. Napailain? How about ang letter B? Hepatitis B. Ang C, ang D, ang G. Charot. <laughs> okay na? Wala na? Agree na mo sa answer nila? Okay? Para akong tang... <laughs> Para akong ano dito sira. Okay? Actually... Okay, the correct answer is A and E. Okay, very good. The batong mnemonics for that is TAE. <laughs> T-A-E. Those that can be transmitted fecal orally. Hepatitis viruses, you have A and E. TAE. Hepatitis A and E. Okay, very easy question lang. All right, okay, sige. That's for the RTE cell cast. Again, ang siyang significance, tubular injury. Okay, all right. Next, we go now to the next cast. Of course, you have the bacterial cast. So, of course, bacterial cast, sa pangalan na, asa mo dyan siya makitaan, sa pyelonephritis. Because again, pyelonephritis is a bacterial infection. All right? 
So therefore, pwede siya makakrate og cast. But the challenge lang sa bacterial cast deers is it's quite challenging. <laughs> the challenge is it's quite the challenge there is medyo difficult siya to identify. Because again, under the bright field micros microscopy or microscope, medyo dili siya makita. So it's best to be stained. And usually, um this is a mixed type of cast, no? Because bacterial cast is usually uh, included or it contains also WBCs, okay? So, um, usually, mas gina-report siya as WBC cast. Kaya mas klaro man ang WBC sa bright field microscope kaysa sa imuhang bacteria. But if you want to stain it, you have to perform gram staining para mas maklaro yun ang bacteria sa sulod. But majority of your bacterial cast is a mixed type of cast because it also contains WBCs. And usually, gina-report siya as WBC cast. Okay? And again, clinical significance pa rin is pyelonephritis. Still the same. Alright? So, muna siya dear sa mga press the buzzer, mga praise the buzzer para maka-praise the Lord ka ng mga 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 significant findings. Bacterial cast, WBC cast, kana palang daan, makita niyo mo sa imuhang case studies, nako, wag ka na mag-isip ng iba, kundi pyelonephritis lang. Alright? Okay, sige. Alright. Now, um, you have number, the next, you have the granular casts. No? So for granular casts, diba, remember this is part of the normal degeneration of casts. So this will follow your um, cellular cast. Diba? So for cellular cast, diba, remember that after cellular cast, the cells will disintegrate. No? Mga guba sila. Alright? So mabili na lang kailangan mga remnants na medyo dagko lang tawon. And these are the granules na makitaan. That's why they are called, uh, mauna ang coarse granular. This one. Ito. Coarse granular. And further disintegration, of course, mga mga nipis or ma-fine granular pag yun siya, or mo disintegrate further ang granules to form this mga smaller granules which becomes now the finely granular. No? So the granular casts, again, usually indicate a disease yun, no from the kidneys. Pero the differentiation between the two types is not significant or it's not necessary. No? So if makakita ka granular cast, you may report it immediately as granular cast because their significance or to differentiate the two, it's not really that important. Okay? Now, it's normal also, granular cast, especially finely granular cast, um, it's believed that the granules, non-pathologic, no, they are all also produced by the normal metabolism, lysosomal destruction of the RTE cells. No? So it's normal also to see a few finely granular casts from time to time. Because again, these are uh, possible lysosomal breakdown products no? of your RTE cells. Okay? So for pathologic, of course, glomerulo, pyelonephritis, still the same affecting no? uh, your nephron. Um, and for physiologic, pwede pong stress and strenuous exercise. Uh, it could it could induce no it could induce the formation of granules and the formation of casts. Okay, all right. So that's for <clears throat> finely granular and the granular casts. All right. Okay. Whew. All right. Sorry, sorry. Medyo ano de. Medyo mainit dito sa place ko so. <laughs> Medyo ano dear pasensya. All right. That's for uh, the granular casts. Wala na ko yung question. Wala na ko yung think. But anyway, sige lang. Next, of course, you have the fatty <clears throat> fatty casts. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Sorry. Fatty casts, no? So, again, for fatty casts, it's a cast, pero nakatapot niya kay mga fats, no? Could be fat droplets or fat globules. And these fat droplets or fat globules can be composed of either tag or neutral fats, triglycerides or neutral fats, or pwede siyang cholesterol, okay? Pwede siyang cholesterol. But take note, for tag and neutral fats, we can identify them through the lipid stains, no? Sudan 3 and oil red O. It will stain the fat droplets, fat globules, orange red, all right? And for cholesterol, it will not be stained by your lipid stains, pero we have to perform polarizing microscopy and it will exhibit a characteristic on say formation, Maltese cross formation. So nasa sa first part, dears, katong Maltese cross. So merge siya cross, iyang appearance. Equal in shape, all right? Equal in um, mga, equal in distances. Basta equal iyang pagka cross, okay? All right. Now, um, but the difference, dears, or like if you want to determine the components of the fatty cast, kung tag ba siya or or cholesterol, it's not really necessary because both of them have the same significance. Okay? So, the mere reporting of fatty cast seen, it's already significant. You don't have to uh, perform na good, uh, the identification if it's really tags ba, uh, triglycerides, or cholesterol ang naa. Okay? Uh, but you can, no? But you need further tests pa. Pero pwede na kang musetol na dili ni mo siya identify kung unsa yun 
composition sa fats. Okay? So, that's for um, fatty cast. And, asa ni siya makita? Nako, nephrotic syndrome. Another disease, dears, na na yung mga pra praise the buzzer guild na mga characteristics. Okay? So, fatty casts, basta daghang fats. Okay? Kana, ju dears, mga case studies, ha? Na mga results in any Massive proteinuria. Kana, massive proteinuria. Alright? Edema, low albumin levels sa imuhang blood, High lipid levels sa imuhang blood, fatty casts, oval fat bodies, fat droplets, in ano gani yung imo makita sa case studies na huwag na mag-isep, praise the buzzer agad-agad, you have nephrotic syndrome. Because nephrotic syndrome is characterized by massive proteinuria, massive yun, mabot og 3.5 grams per day of albumin imo makita, and massive lipiduria, na dyan kay fats makita. So you have fatty casts, fat droplets, Oval fat body. So, wag na mag-isep. Basta, inaanagani ang sa case studies, dear ha, sinasabi ko talaga sa inyo, wag na mag-isep. Okay? Alright. Diretso na sa fatty cast. Okay. Maltese cross. Ayan, ito. Favorite. Balitag para. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, mm, Andrea G. Ay, Andrea Orevillo. Ando ka man ka Andrea ni? Ay, tulod eh ka Andrea. Okay. Andrea Dearst. Are you still there? Or baka nag-itsira ko na. Charo. <laughs> Andrea. Wala na. Yes. Okay. Nag-itsira ko na si Andrea. Sige. Dala po ko, dears. Okay. <laughs> si, ano na lang. Adrian, ikaw na lang, dears. Sige. Aid. Para kota ka ngayon. <laughs> Adrian. Aid. Nag-itsira ko na po ka, dears. Ano saan naman? Ano saan naman, dear, the pita? What is happening? Okay. Aid. Adrian, going once. Going twice. All right. Sir. Ah, okay, nana si Andrea di ay, sorry. Si Andrea na lang aid. Sige, kaya nibalik na siya. Sorry, pasensya kay aid. Pasin na. Hala, sorry kayo aid. May nagbalik kasi. Ah, tsaka, tsaka. <laughs> Andrea Dears. Orivilio. Sorry. Okay, na, na, nahurot rapog imong pangihi. Pasin na disrupt ba? Hi, sir. Gihurot rapog pangihi akong gay cows. Itcher ako. <laughs> Okay, there's some question kay Maltis Cross. Ayan, sa 4CM, ang Maltis Cross kay cholesterol. But for para, kinsa na itong organism na ito na naay karakteristik Maltis Cross appearance when seen inside the RBCs? Kinsa man ito? Oh my God, na-challenge ko sir. Koan sir, Maltis okay. Cross. Okay, na sa challenge. Maltis Cross, basta Maltis Cross niya, para. Alam nyo na yan. Ikaw din yung si Para. To answer, the start of B. Si B. Parang, sige, kids naman. B, B, B. What did ka start yung letter C? Charo, check ka lang. Okay. Kasi B, B, C, sir. Okay. Tama. Very good. Thank you, Andrea. And si Missy, yan na pong kitsa at Babisha. Take note there siya. Basta Maltese Cross sa Para, it's Babisha. Pero kung sa CM, Maltese Cross is cholesterol. Now, take note there's baka malibog mo later. Naay cholesterol crystals. Okay? Naay cholesterol crystals na i-discuss na to. But those cholesterol crystals, dilis lang mo exhibit o Maltese cross formation under polarizing microscopy. So makita na rin cholesterol um, formation or Maltese cross formation sa cholesterol when the cholesterol is incorporated in fatty casts or mga uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Fatty casts or mga oval fat body. Sorry. Medyo na-choke mag-uko. Charat. So, fatty casts and fat globules in ana, oval fat bodies. And if cholesterol ilahang sulod, dito sila makita ang Maltese cross formation. Pero if cholesterol crystals in itself, ha, dito sila mo exhibit og um, cholesterol, ay sorry, Maltese cross formation. Okay? So, later when we go to the different crystals. Okay, thank you, Andrea and Missy. Babisha, take note of that, dears. All right, okay, si Gia. Next, we go now to your waxy cast. All right. Now, for waxy cast, di ba, remember, this is the last stage na yun, no? In the order of degeneration. All right? Now, the waxy cast, as you can see, yung appearance is homogeneous in appearance. Pero as you can see, medyo mas dark na siya, no? Mas maklaro na siya compared to your hyaline cast. Because again, daghan na siyang naagian. Okay? Naagian na siyang different cells, no? And the different breakdown products of the cells, mga pigments, ilang mga color, na contribute na nila dira sa imuhang waxy cast. So this waxy cast, as you can see, um, it's brittle. Ayan, medyo brittle. Na siya mga cracks. Ayan, mga fissures. Ayan, sa iyahang kilid-kilid. Alright? Okay? Because of possible uh, long, long standing or long urinary stasis, no? So possible ni crack na dapita. Alright? And the clinical significance of this is indicative na siya of 
renal failure and urine stasis or meaning na block na ang urine dili na siya mo mugawas no and because of this there could be enlargement na all right of your tubules okay and that's why um the waxy cast is produced okay and the waxy cast according to Branzel is considered to be the renal failure cast nako take note of that si Branzel ang nagsabi hindi ako all right si Branzel according to her okay kay um si waxy cast daw ang renal failure cast okay all right now again it indicates prolonged stasis and tubular obstruction and it represents an advanced no it it represents the advanced stage of other casts so sa cancer pa siyang advanced stage sa mga cancer okay so siya ang advanced stage sa mga casts kaya siya nagyud ang pinaka last na part okay all right ayan so that's for the waxy cast so as you can see if mo siyang stain po dear sa sternheimer malbin iyang color is medyo darker pink compared to your hyaline all right take note of that so it's still diba under homogeneous matrix homogeneous siya because smooth iyang appearance wala siya other cellular inclusions na naa <clears throat> okay all right so that's for the waxy cast now this waxy cast all right it can further pagyud if mo intensify pagyud imo hang tubular dilation mas mo widen pagyud imo hang tubules which is seen na gyud in mga end stage renal failure or mga kidney disease then of course it can form the broad cast and this is the failure cast of strasinger na kopatay paano na to sir okay anyway broadcast again indicates dilation widening nagyud of your tubules which indicates nagyud na nawala na ilang function kay nag nidako na gyud siya no wala na, wala na dinha sila kabalo mo control no uh, nawala na gyud ilang function that's why it's indicative of complete loss na gyud of function or renal failure all right and any type of cast can be broad pero the most common gyud is granular and waxy because again remember sa order of the generation diba granular waxy ang medyo the last two stages so therefore ang next na ana is possible na na broad that's why granular wax yung pinaka common all right and again the presence of many broad casts it indicates poor prognosis now remember that your collecting duct and dct it can serve a lot of nephrons okay especially the collecting duct so possible ana na kung daghang broadcast nag nag naggikan ra sa usa ka collecting duct it means na katong mga nephrons niya gi serve possible pod na nga destroy na kay daghan ang broadcast ang nakita sa imong urine okay so the presence of many broadcasts indicates a uh, poor prognosis broad cast okay dili katong news broadcast charot okay so clinical significance extreme urine stasis and renal failure so again according to strasinger this is the renal failure cast okay so sir paano na yarn omg paano na yan <laughs> paano ko ang question sa boards or sa exam which of the following is considered to be the renal failure cast so wala problema kung the two choices are not given so let's say given rang waxy or given ra ang broad so you can choose katong waxy or broad but what if given ang duha ka choice sir what is our what is our answer what will be our answer prayers okay <laughs> wait out um siguro look at the question how it is phrased okay so if ang question kay renal failure cast okay and the presence of this indicates poor prognosis then you go for broadcast okay pero kung renal failure cast lang and then um indicates lang extreme urine stasis or urine stasis obstruction you may answer waxy siguro okay so muna sya kung ano dear sya muna sya kung ano ra chika okay so depende gyud po ninyo <laughs> pero take note na i conflicting sa resources all right so si Branzel kay renal failure cast niya is waxy for strasinger it's broadcast but in a way diba makayon po ka na the waxy cast can be a broadcast kay pwede siyang mo enlarge ang size sa waxy cast the broadcast can also be a wax can also be a waxy cast so possible gyud siya no but anyway all right so ayun sana naman hindi lumabas na question okay all right sige all right that's for the broadcast okay next you have of course pigmented cast the one that we mentioned sa RBC cast no when RBCs disintegrate especially RBCs no they may lyse and release hemoglobin and they may form this homogeneous matrix no na color brown in appearance all right and that is known now as the blood cast or uh, the hemoglobin cast or the muddy brown cast it could also be bile ayan kung taas ang bilirubin as you can see yeah uh, dark brown no golden brown and kanisa na sa black deers or mga rte cells no stained by bilirubin so golden brown and it can also be myoglobin in cases of rhabdomyolysis no ayan so again homogeneous matrix dirty in appearance no granular uh, brown casts 
Again, when these casts are seen, it can be attributed to acute tubular necrosis because of the toxicity, toxic effects of hemoglobin and myoglobin or, or, hemoglo or myoglobin to your tubules. Okay? All right. That's for pigmented cast. Next, it can also be, again, mixed cellular. So, possible na imuhang cast, it contains two types of cells, all right? So, most common is putting RBC and WBC in one cast. And kung payelo, you have WBC and RTE cells or WBCs and bacteria. So, how do you report that? Of course, you look at the cell na predominant, na significant sa imuhang disease. So, example, for glomerulonephritis, ang pinaka-significant yun or predominant is your RBCs. So, although na kay mixed cellular cast, you have to report it as RBC cast seen pa rin, okay? You can also note na mixed cellular siya, pero it's according to Brenzel, I think, sa kung nabasa, you have to report it kung unsay predominant and significant for the disease. So example, for payelo, of course, WBC is ang mas significant, so you have to report this WBC cast. If uh, glomerulo, RBC cast. Kung uh, tubular injury, RTE cell cast. Okay, so inana. All right? Okay. And any combination is possible. All right. So, pwedeng magmix ang different types of cells. All right. And the last of the casts are, of course, the crystal casts. So, this is rarely seen, no? Pero the most common usually kay mga monohydrate, kaox, ayan, mga crystals na nasa cast, and sulfamethoxazole crystals. So, when you take mga sulfonamides, mga antibiotics. All right? Now, take note, ang clinical significance niya, dears, is the deposition of these crystals in your uh, renal tubules. So the fact that pag pagawas ni mo or pag pangihi ni mo na nakainakit ang crystals, alright, it means that sa sulit pa lang dance mong lawas, ni precipitate na sila, alright, or ni create na sila as crystals. And this could damage the tubules, alright, especially once nakakita ka na naasla sa casts, kay ni precipitate sila. And these are solid, mga gahi na mga crystals, mga precipitates, no? So they could harm the tubules pag precipitate nila sa sulit. So muna siya yung significance if makakita na kaagad-agad og crystals, no? Uh, Pag-ihi pa lang, freshly voided urine. Because normally, crystals will precipitate after refrigeration or after some time of preservation. Okay? So, if makakita na ka daan crystals sa mong freshly voided urine, that's the clinical significance. Possible deposition or precipitation inside the tubules pa lang daan of the crystals which could lead to damage okay, of your tubules. And that's the importance of these mga casts. All right? And again, it's accompanied by varying amounts of hematuria. Because again, these are crystals that are solid. It can irritate, no? it can uh, harm, damage the lining of the urinary tract pag pass nila sa ihi. So therefore, it can introduce blood, no? na hematuria. Alright? Okay. So here's a summary, dears. Again, ako lang i-post. This is from Branzel. Ayan. So yan ang i-summarize. Yun sa mga possible chemical exam correlation. And here the other, um, here are the other, ano, casts. Alright? Pwede po siyang fungal cast. Wow, yes. Pero di kayo siya common, yes. Kung fungal ang cause sa pyronephritis. Alright? Ayan. So I'll post this after our lecture. Alright. So before I proceed, any questions? <laughs> before I proceed to the last part, mga crystals. Okay. Ayan. Diba? Okay ra. Atong mga questioning na part, diba? At least, atong goal you dears, kay para ma-prepare na mo sa oral revalida. Okay? Para you look at the CI, eye to eye good, and then answer it uh, with a smile on your face. <laughs> you betrayed me. Charot, Emela. Okay, sige. Any questions? So, for casts, again, kinsa to ato ang definitive na maka-differentiate sa imuhang pyronephritis and cystitis or lower UTI, on sa to siya, your WBC cast. Okay. The WBC cast. Take note of that, dear siya. Very important talaga when you answer mga case studies. Okay? Kay na, kumu gawas gina. Paglanto pala ni mo daan. Ah, wa na shade na daan. One, two, three, four. Pak. O, di ba? <laughs> Sige. Alright. So, that's for the casts. Okay? Alright. So, casts. Okay. Um, speaking of casts, charot. Okay. Ang wicked na ni Kaz. Charot. Okay. Ay, wala. Gamay rin mga, ano diri, mga Broadway fan. But anyway, <laughs> ayan, sige. We're gonna do the crystals. Ayan. Now, remember that your urine, of course, as mentioned, although it's 95% water, all right, uh, it still contains dissolved solutes. And one of those dissolved solutes are, of course, the inorganic, no? Mga inorganic solutes. Mga calcium, potassium, and all that. And aside from that, it may also contain medications, no? Breakdown products from the food that we eat. And once these are in high concentrations, they have the possibility to precipitate out of the solution, all right? And this becomes your crystals, okay? All right. Now, what are the appearance? Of course, they are geometrically formed structures, 
or pwede siyang amorphous. When I say amorphous, wala siya'y tarong na itsura, <laughs> wala siya'y tarong na form or shape. All right? So, not the question, I think, uh, if you ask mo what is the meaning of amorphous, it means shapeless. All right? Shapeless. Okay, shapeless. Okay, ayan. All right. Now, what are the factors affecting no, the formation of your calculi formation or, uh, sorry, crystal formation or solubility? Number one is, of course, temperature. Because in low temperatures, especially in cold temperatures, your solutes will precipitate and become crystals. Okay? That is why normally, dearest, in a normal patient na urine, your crystals will be seen after, okay, after refrigeration. Because this low temperature, again, can facilitate the precipitation of these crystals out of the solution. Number two, solute concentration, as we have mentioned, okay? Solute concentration, if they are really increased in number, diba? remember in your gen chem, in organic chemistry, basta imuhang solution gani kay daghan na kayong solutes, all right? What happens? The solution becomes super saturated. And this super saturation will manifest as a precipitation no precipitate out of uh, the solution all right and lastly ph no it determines the type of crystal na makita nato okay because na some crystals na mo precipitate if alkaline ang ph na iba na precipitate if acidic ang ph okay all right Ayan, sige. Now, usually reported as rare, few, moderate, many per HPF ang normal crystals. Abnormal crystals, average number per 10 HPF uh, on say na field per LPF. So, average number and reported per LPF. Okay, so that's for uh, your crystals. So, pwede kong mention. Mm. Um, aside from that, of course, yes, urinary stasis, another factor po dear. So if dugay kaayo, matangtang ang ihi, magpugong mong ihi, or sa sulit pa dan sa mong nephron, dili ka flow dahil ang, ang ihi because of obstruction, of course, this will facilitate. Kay madugay man sila, uh, maklag sila, no? So it will give them time to aggregate to each other para mo form of crystals. Okay? So, unsa may main importance with any dears, it's because we can determine good, no? Uh, unsa na mga crystals ang ma-form, ani na pH, unsa mga crystals na ma-form, if kani ato ang kanon, or unsa mga crystals form if kaniya ito ang imno na mga medications. Primarily, yung sa ito ang goal is to prevent the formation of eventually formation of renal stones because your kidney stones are made up of these crystals. Okay? So, to prevent the formation of your kidney stones, we have, we can modify our diet, we can modify our uh, mga practices para delete, delete sila ma-form. Okay? Because again, they are really dependent on these factors. Okay? All right. Now, of course, your crystals can be divided into the normal and abnormal. And for normal, we have the alkaline and acidic na mga uh, crystals. All right, or crystals na makita sa acidic alkaline urine. So we'll start first with the normal acidic, uh, normal crystals seen in acidic urine. You have number one, of course, the amorphous urates. All right. So nasa pangalan na amorphous, no? They don't have a a definite shape. Wala sila ano form. Wala sila um, definite, no, na definite form, shapeless. Ilang appearance mura siya granules, mura siya sand, okay? So, um, again, um, when examining under the microscope, na siya color, alright? It may be color yellow, brown granules, alright? Or, um, when refrigerated, it may, it may combine with your uroerythrin to form this pink sediment known as your brick dust appearance. Okay? Now, amorphous urates is actually a type of uric acid, no, na crystal. Your amorphous urates will precipitate or siya mo prevail if the pH is greater than mga 5.7, okay? Uh, 5.7 below, uric acid siya, alright? So, it's it's actually a form of um, amorphous, uh, it's a form of uric acid, okay? Alright, so again, it can be seen in your acidic urine. And as a soluble, of course, sa imuhang alkali. Okay, let me check sa dear sa baka nagkamali ako. Okay. Okay, tama. So, tama. So, if pH is greater than 5.7, that's according to Benzel, na yung reference is 5.5, pH greater than 5.7, imuhang ihi, alright, uric acid will be in its ionized form, such as kani, amorphous urates or kaning second one, acid urates, alright? Pag higher than 5.7 or 5.5, alright? So, acid urates, again, again, um, these are salts of uric acid. Iyahang appearance kay mga spheres, no? Small yellow-brown balls or spheres and they may mistake, eh, they be mistaken as your leucine crystals. So later na tayo picture sa leucine crystals, pero mura siya, uh, para siya appearance, no? Ayan. Okay. Sige. And then for solubility, it can be uh, dissolved by heat and after addition of acetic acid, it will be converted to uric acid. Similar po sa amorphous urates, dears, if mo siyang adan o uric acid, ang amorphous urates, mahimo siyang uric acid. Because again, na-acidify ang sample. And remember that less than 5.7 or 5.5 Ma mahimo siyang uric acid. 
Okay? All right. Another is your sodium, uh, monosodium urate. Ayan. So, it's colorless to light yellow. Slender and pencil-like. Ayan. Pencil-like prisms. Uh, the ends are not pointed. As you can see, medyo blunted iya hang ends. Mura pencil. So, again, it's still derived from uric acid. All right? So, solubility, again, it will um, dissolve at 60 degrees Celsius. Okay. All right. Sige. Okay, that's monosodium uh, urate. All right. Next is, of course, ang star ng Pasco, you have uric acid. Considered to be the most pleomorphic. When you say pleomorphic, again, it assumes a lot of shape. All right. And again, uric acid, we all know that, that it's a product of purine metabolism. No? Uh, of course, no mention na nato na siya. And what are the different shapes? No, the most common you dears is rhombic to diamond. And it's yellow to golden brown in color. The most common is your rhombic diamond, all right? Pero siyang wedge, hexagonal, na siya six sides, four-sided flat plate, and pwede siyang lemon-shaped, according to Henry's. Take note of that, no? Aside from that, pwede po siyang mahimong cubes, barrels, pataas, mga bands. They may clump to form rosettes or mag flower petals, ayan? They can be mistaken as cysteine crystals, take note, because your cysteine crystals na siya, ihang shape good is hexagon. Your uric acid will also have a hexagon shape, all right? And your uric acid, again, often show layers or laminations on their surface, all right? Take note of that. Nasa mga layers or laminations. Now, of course, um, in normal, no, it's normal to have little mga uric acid crystals sa itong ihi. Because again, this is from normal purine metabolism. But increased in uric acid concentrations, such as in diseases like Lesh Nyhan syndrome, chemotherapy, and of course, gout. This may introduce or mas high ang risk of patients na makakos og uric acid crystal sa ilang ihi. All right? Kung taas ilang concentration sa uric acid sa ilang blood. All right? So, Lesh Nyhan syndrome, of course, there is a deficiency in the enzyme HGPRT, hypoxanthine guanine, phosphoribosyl transferase. All right? Um, and you have. Chemotherapy, of course, there's metabolism of the cell nuclei releasing purines, therefore, the uric acid. And of course, gout, the deposition of excess uric acid in your joints. Okay, gout. And solubility, of course, is alkali. Ma dissolve siya sa alkali. All right. Kung sige nitong ano, um, clean chem nato be, CC1. Kung say major product, okay, of uric acid metabolism. Diba, diba, ila, ila. <laughs> Uh, yes, Eldrick, on my answer. <laughs> Nag-leave dahil sa mga. Eldrick, nag-leave ka? On sa matong, di ba, sa to ang chemical detection of your uric acid? Yes, on sa man to. Ernst, on sa ngalan? Sa uric acid talaga, sir. Yes, uric acid. You have? Uh, uh, urines? Urates? Clean cam siya, clean cam. Urines, sir. You? On sa tong question, sir? What's <laughs> a breakdown? What's a product after the breakdown of uric acid, diba? Napasay further. Ang iyang end product is known as your? Maragosana is purines. Purines. Pu purines. Okay. Sigi. All right. Yes. Napay mo answer. Kara. Okay. On some of Um, Not sure, cause sir. Um, Alan, Alan Toin, sir. Okay, very good. Tama, Alan Toyn. That's what I was looking for. Alan Toyn. Okay, take note of that. Okay, so a lot of good. Ma <laughs> insert lang. Okay, Alan Toyn. Take note of that. So take note of that. There's ha mga praise the buzzer na mga questions natin. All right, okay. Most pleomorphic. Why? Because it can assume a lot of shapes. So here's an example. This is the rhombic diamond. As you can see, Marsha Glemon. No, that's why it's called a lemon shaped. Um, Lemon shape na crystal. Aside from that, it may have laminated or layered na form. As you can see, mura siya sa each other. Ayan, laminated, layered form. Next, you have, it may have also the barrel form. As you can see, medyo siya, medyo baga siya. Mura siya barrel. Ayan, barrel form. And lastly, it may also exhibit what we call a pseudo-cast formation. It's not a true cast, pero because of the nagpatong-patong sila sa each other na mga uric acid, mura siya cast lang tawad. So as you can see, mura siya possible shapes. Yan, hexagonal, mershag, 16 crystal again, dears. And this is the most common shape, the diamond shape. No? So if in the future, no, mag, mag intern mo, of course, sa hospitals, and then usually, if makakita ka crystal, niya medyo mragdili ka common kung unsa ni siya, like kula ka balo kung unsa yun siya, then it's possibly that it is uric acid. Okay? So it's possible na uric acid siya. So if makadiscover ka crystal sa imuhang ihi na sure ka na crystal siya, pero di ka kabalo, wala ka kabalo if unsa yung identity 
and na, na-check na gudimo siya na dili siya triple phosphate, dili po siya, you know, the normal kaox, possibly that is uric acid. Because again, uric acid can assume a lot of shapes. Okay? It's pleomorphic. Alright. Lemon-shaped. Okay. Sige. Lemon-shaped. Para. Kinsa yun itong naay lemon-shaped na ova. Roundworm. Okay. Lemon-shaped. Kylomestic, sir. N- nematod. Ano oh, sinasabi ko talaga? Nematod yun. <laughs> Lou J. Thank you, Rex. Okay, very good. Trichuris, trichura. Pero kung protozoa, protozoa, lemon-shaped cyst, kinsa man? Kylomastics. Ayun, kylomastics. No, take note there sa lemon-shaped egg, lemon-shaped cyst. Nako, different yun. Okay? Alright. Okay, sige. Very good. So, for lemon-shaped crystal, ang answer nato is uric. Acid. Okay. All right. Next, we have, of course, kaox, calcium oxalate. And it's considered to be the most frequently observed crystals in your human urine. That's from Brazil. Because, as you can see, aside na makitan siya sa mong acidic urine, pwede po siya makitan sa neutral. And at oftentimes, makita po siya sa alkaline. So that's why it's considered to be the most frequently observed. Kaya pwede siyang makitan in different pH, no? Uh, pwede acidic or neutral. And at times, alkaline. Alright? Now, the different forms, you have two major forms. You have the dihydrate and the monohydrate. And how do we remember the different uh, other names, no? Of your uh, forms. So, number one, you have the dihydrate. Okay? Dihydrate, also known as your we the light and lastly you have the monohydrate what's the other name we we light so how do you remember kung kinsa to na letter d siya po ang dahang letter d okay so kung si we the light daghan siyang letter d therefore yung other name is letter d pod dihydrate take note of that so dihydrate letter d we the light monohydrate therefore is the we we light so pwede nimo i change ning w dere diba Ang letter M, kung imo siyang ibali, mura siyang W. Diba? Mas, mas complicated na. So, dili lang ka sa dihydrate. Kung kinsa itong letter D sa ngalan, siya po ang letter D sa other name. So, dihydrate, na siya letter D. Nag-start siya letter D. Okay? So, iyahang other name kay Wedelite. Okay? So, that's how we remember. Alright. Now, the dihydrate or the Wedelite is the mo- most common form of your kaox. And again, iyahang uh, characteristic appearance, pyramidal, iyahang shape or envelope. That's why, pakitake note, dears, your dihydrate is also known as the envelope crystals. Okay, more envelope in appearance. Okay? Now, envelope in the sense that yahang X, you dears, kay nasa tunga. Okay? Alright. Sayo pa kong drawing ha, pero inana yahang X, no? X nasa tunga. Uy, nasa tunga si X. Charot. Okay. Now, for monohydrate, as you can see, it can assume a lot of shapes. Board. It can be oval. That's why pwede siyang mamistaken as RBCs. And it can also be dumbbell in appearance. Alright? They may cluster together and may attach to your mucous threads. Alright? And we have this bacteria in our intestine, na normal flora. And the main purpose is to degrade oxalate from the food that we eat. Alright? And that is your oxalobacter for medianess. So if decreased ka na level of bacteria, especially daw in patients with cystic fibrosis, possible na imuhang ang, ang ilahang serum or ilahang plasma taas o oxalate levels. So mas prone sila to forming renal stones. Okay? So unsa significance, of course, um, usually wala alang siya, pero it's always increased or it can be increased when we eat um, ascorbate-rich foods such as your tomato, asparagus, mga drinks such as coffee, mga tea, chocolate, no? Because uh, ascorbate, no, once metabolized, iyahang breakdown product is oxalate, alright? Aside from that, oxalic acid, yeah. oxalic acid silang coffee, tea, and chocolate, yeah. So, oxalic acid, ascorbate, no, ilahang mga breakdown products is oxalate. So, that's why sa mga mag-take of vitamin C, dira, dears, make sure na dili mo mag-overdose, no? And if daghan mag mong vitamin C na iinom, alright, make sure that you hydrate well to prevent the formation of mga kidney stones. Because again, remember that the breakdown product of your ascorbic acid is, again, um, oxalate. And the main component of your renal stones is calcium oxalate. Okay? Alright, so take note of that. Okay, so for solubility, again, it can be dis- dissolved by HCL. That's why sa vitamin C, dears, uh, every day lang, ang, min- ang imuhang recommended is 500 milligrams of vitamin C. And usually, kana inyo mga ginatambal na beroka or mga supplements, usually, muna yun na ang amounts of vitamin C na naan nila. So, one tablet would suffice. Okay? You don't have to overdose. Okay? Ayan. Okay. Alright. See. So, that's for 
calcium oxalate. So here's an example or uh, pictures. As you can see, ang monohydrate deers, it can assume a lot of shapes. Number one, pwede siyang inani, dumbbell shape. All right, dumbbell shape. Ayan, uh, it could be long forms. Mara siyang fence pickets or kanang murag, kanang sa fence, gani, na wood, na inani ang appearance, no? Fence pickets. And lastly, it could uh, be ovoid. As you can see, mara siyang RBC. Kaya na siyang murag central pallor sa tunga. All right? Ayan, so that's the ovoid forms. As you can see, ang dihydrate, ayan, ang X niya, dears, nagyod, niyagi sa tunga. All right? And it looks like an envelope, all right? And again, I forgot to mention, the main importance of the uwewe light or the monohydrate is seen in cases of ethylene glycol poisoning or antifreeze because antifreeze is sweet, no? Possible na mamistaken as a juice or a drink. Kay tam is siya, all right? Okay, so again, that's the significance of your uwewe light or the monohydrate. Next, of course, just mga normal crystals, dears, you have calcium sulfate, cigarette butt in appearance. It is similar in appearance to your calcium phosphate, pero take note, how do you differentiate the pH? Calcium sulfate, again, is found in acidic urine. Calcium phosphate is in alkaline urine. Next, you have sodium urates. It can be needles, no, no pointed ends, or sheaves or clusters, meaning nagtapok sila, clusters. Hyperic acid, elongated prisms. And take note, for hyperic acid, dears, on sayahang solvent na, ma na madissolve siya, water, or even ether, ether, okay? All right. So here are some pictures, ayan, needles, no, as you can see, no pointed ends, and sodium urate, and for hyperic acid, again, elongated prisms, all right? Okay, so, kanang purpose sa solubility, dears, you can use that to identify the crystals, no? So if medyo naglibog ka kung sa siya, especially if mga needles, daghan kayong mga crystals na needles in appearance, no? So you can use solubility test to differentiate, all right? And also history. You look at the history of the patient, okay? All right, ayan, sige. That's for the normal crystals found in acidic urine. Now we go on to the normal crystals found in your alkaline urine. So of course, the counterpart of amorphous urates, <laughs> oh my God, sorry. Amorphous urates is amorphous phosphates, all right? So amorphous phosphates, makita sa alkaline, no? Urine, again, it has appearance, same gap on same amorphous urates. It's granular in appearance. It, found, it, it produces a white precipitate, okay? And microscopically, again, they cannot be distinguished from amorphous urates. So how do you differentiate? You look at pH and solubility. Remember that your amorphous phosphate is soluble uh, using dilute acetic acid. Okay? And pH, sa pH pa lang daan, kung alkali ng ihi, alright, of course, that's amorphous phosphates. And kung, kung acidic siya, amorphous urates. So, makadetermine ka sa cause of turbidity because both of them can cause non-pathologic turbidity. Okay. Alright, okay, sige. Next, you have, of course, the ammonium biurate or also known as ammonium urates, no? Very distinct characteristic, dears, yellow, brown, thorny apples. Alam na alam yun na yar, no? Basta thorny apples, thorny apples, press the buzzer, ammonium biurate, ammonium urate. So it can be seen in old specimens, all right? And it's still derived from uric acid, dears. So if prolonged na taas na kayong pH, no? Old specimens na yun, it can become, your uric acid crystal can become ammonium biurate. Pero pag add na po ni mo acid, like HCl or acetic acid, it will convert to uric acid. All right? It may resemble some forms of sulfonamide crystals. For significance, again, uh, generally, um, dili siya significant to kayo. Pero it may indicate the presence of the urea splitting bacteria, no? Such as your proteus. Okay? So solubility, again, acetic acid with heat. But take note, dears, it's not always in any appearance na mga spicules or na mga tusok-tusok na appearance. It can be this, na smooth lang, spheroid form. That's why pwede siyang mistaken as sulfonamide crystal. Okay? Excuse me, sorry. All right, okay. So muna siya yung possible appearance. So it's not always na inani ha, na naimbro mga thorns. That's why it's called thorny apples. Pwede siyang inani, spheroid form. Okay, all right, okay. Next, of course, very popular na to is the triple phosphate, your magnesium ammonium phosphate, also known as your struvite. Okay, your struvite, okay. So of course, very distinct characteristic, dears appearance, coffin lid appearance of the crystal. And aside from that, very important uh, note, to remember, when it disintegrates, it becomes feathery in appearance, ayan, ganito, or fern-like, or fern leaf in appearance. Take note of that. No, basta fern-like, fern leaf, feathery in appearance, kung mo disintegrate, press the buzzer, that is triple phosphate. No, Magnesium ammonium phosphate. And again, it's significant, still the same, the presence of urea splitting bacteria, no, especially proteus. And solubility, it's still dilute acetic 
acid. Okay, so later, uh, when we go to renal disease, uh, pre-recorded, dears, again, this is a major component put of calculi, kidney stones, all right? And it's usually attributed from infection of mga urea-splitting bacteria, such as your proteus. Okay, all right. Next, another is magnesium phosphate. Ayan, uh, another well, like clinical significance, normally found in your urine, but it's rarely seen. Okay, large rectangular crystals na nai notch. <laughs> mga nai mga notch dyan. Okay, so nasa notch, meaning mag nasa incomplete na part here. Okay, so solubility niya is acetic acid. Okay, all right. So that's magnesium phosphate. Next, of course, you have calcium phosphate or your apatite. Okay, other name. Uh, your calcium phosphate, again, it may form rosette forms or stars. That's why it's called stellar phosphates. The stellar phosphates is your dibasic uh, calcium phosphate, all right, dibasic. And kani mga granular sheets or flat plates is the monobasic uh, calcium phosphate, all right? The rosettes may resemble again sulfonamide and may appear Japan as needles. That's why dagan kayong parehas gudu at itsura, mga needles, no? Dagan kayong mga crystals na needles ilahang appearance, all right? So for other forms, ilahang other name, hydroxyapatite is the basic calcium phosphate. And for brushite is calcium hydrogen phosphate. So memorize the dears kung sa mga other names nila. Kasi lumalabas pa rin. Okay? Basta if you mention hydroxyapatite, brushite, apatite, that is indicative or it refers to calcium phosphate. Okay? And solubility is your dilute acetic acid. So here's an example. You have the rosette forms. As you can see, mga needles. Ayan. As you can see, kani siya ang rosette or star, stellar phosphate. So mara siyang star. And mara siyang na-i fan. F-A-N. Mara siyang pai-pai na formation. Bundles or sheaves. Ayan. And sheet or plate. Murag dako siya na flat na plate. Okay? That's calcium phosphate. Okay. Next, you have also calcium carbonate. No? Dumbbell shape or oval, tetrads, upat ka buop, alright? Um, the importance lang, dears, is pag add ni mo acetic acid, sa mo hang ihi, alright? It may form a gas, effervescence. That's the reaction of calcium carbonate to acetic acid. So there's gas formation. Your calcium carbonate can also be mistaken as bacteria, alright? Uh, take note of that. Pero, Again, pag add mo acetic acid, it will produce gas, effervescence. Okay? Sa bacteria, wala. Alright? Because acetic acid will not dissolve your bacteria. Okay? Alright. Sige. That's for the normal crystals of both acidic and alkaline urine. Alright. For the last type of crystals, you have the abnormal crystals. For the abnormal crystals, of course, these are crystals coming from metabolic disorders coming from medications that you drink, okay, that precipitate, no, inside your tubules, which could damage your tubules, and also those that um, are infused into the patient, such as your radiographic contrast media during uh, radiographic procedures, okay? All right. So you have abnormal crystals, number one is cysteine, no? For cysteine, we mentioned that this is, again, hexagonal, six-sided shape, all right? And the side is not always even, meaning na ubang side na mas taas or diligyo siya same og appearance. It can be mistaken as uric acid, as we have mentioned, because, again, your uric acid may also have a hexagonal shape. All right. Significance is cystinuria and cystinosis. So these are metabolic disorders in which there could be a problem in the reabsorption of cysteine or in the there's an enzyme deficiency na wala sa metabolism of cysteine. And aside from that, cysteine, if ma accumulate siya, it can cause or it can form renal calculi. So na mga cysteine stones, kidney stones. So solubility, again, ammonia and dilute HCl. So how do we differentiate uric acid? The gang tests na pwedeng ma-perform. Ma you can perform the cyanide nitroperside reaction test, which is confirmatory for your cysteine, positive si cysteine. You can also use dilute HCl na soluble si cysteine insoluble si uric acid. So, daghang possible. Pero again, pwede na si cyanide nitroperside reaction. Okay. Now, if you want to test the ideas, like example sa turbidity, no? So, for turbidity, um, let's say mga amorphous phosphates, di ba one of the remedy is to warm the temperature. So, of course, para dili ma-affected ang ubang mga parameters sa mga sa chemical or mga casts na to, pwede kang mukuha araw alikot. Like, kuha ka gamay na volume from the sample, alright? And then, i-test for the turbidity ba or i-test siya for in ano ng mga tests para dili ma-affected uh, or naradya po kayo mabili na sample for the other tests. Okay? Alright. Sige, para dili ma-affected yung tanan sa muhang specimen. Okay? Alright, sige. So here are your cysteine crystals. As you can see, the side is not always even. Diba? Ayan. As you can see. And mura siya og, again, uh, uric acid crystals. Alright? Because na ay na ni na appearance ang uric acid. Okay. Next, you have, of course, the cholesterol crystals. Muna siya akong dimension, dears. No? Ang appearance ng cholesterol crystals, like crystals yun mismo, they are rectangular in shape. Alright? Rectangular plates or prism na naadya po'y 
notch. <laughs> so, na siya mga notch, meaning na siya mga incomplete na parts. And, pwede siyang mo-exhibit og staircase pattern. Mura siyang hagdan. Okay? Para sa ani, kani, staircase pattern. Basta na notch rectangular uh, prism. Alright? Pero the, dif the disadvantage lang is that it can be mistaken as your radiographic dye media. And your radiographic dye media, again, yung crystals pareha so ginani, yung appearance. Again, as again po ni significant, nephrotic syndrome. Na napod, no? So again, mga press the buzzer na characteristics ni nephrotic. You have again mga fats, fatty casts, oval fat bodies, fat droplets, cholesterol crystals, mga yun, Anna. Alright? Solubility, again, chloroform, ether, and hot alcohol. Alright, okay. Take note of that. So this is for polarizing microscopy. Ayan, mga plates, rectangular plates. Now, as you can see, another one is radiographic dye. So this is infused in the patient during mga radiographic procedures. Alright? And radiographic dye, ayan, as you can see, it will precipitate similar Japan crystals with your um, cholesterol. As you can see, rectangular and eye notch. Alright? So how do we differentiate, of course, number one, patient history. No? So if na eye indication dito na ni Agi siya o radiographic technique, so possible na katong crystal na mo nakita, it's radiographic dye. Number two is correlation with other urinalysis results. If the patient is exhibiting nephrotic syndrome, alright, dapat makakita po kag proteinuria, kakita kag fatty casts, mga fat droplets, oval fat bodies to confirm na kanyang mga crystals na mo nakita na in ani are also cholesterol crystals. Pero if nakakita kag crystals na in ani, pero walay proteinuria, walay fatty casts, mga oval fat bodies, so likely the crystals are radiographic contrast media. And lastly, if imuhang SG is greater than 1.040 using a refractometer or other density measurements such as ur urinometry and all that, then uh, it is caused by radiographic dye. If makakita ka crystals na inani. Alright? Because if cholesterol crystal ni siya dears, the SG should be normal or dili siya kaabot og 1.040. Okay? Because higher than 1.040 indicative na siya of radiographic dye infusion. Okay? Alright. So, 10% NOH, imuhang solubility. So, as you can see, pwede siyang needles gapon. Ayan. Pero, nabog siya mga rectangular plates, which can be mistaken as cholesterol. Alright. Okay. Next, of course, we go now to the different liver disorder um, crystals. Ayan. Nagbabalik ang mnemonic ni Matini. You have the BLT. Okay? So, you have the BLT sa micro, you have also BLT sa CM. So, ang BLT sa CM, this is again, the liver disorder crystals. Letter B stands for bilirubin, L stands for leucine, and T stands for tyrosine. Okay? Take note. BLT. Okay? Sa micro, kinsa ni mga BLT gani sa atong bakte? Spirochetes. Spirochetes. Okay. Yeah. Gas-gas na, gas-gas na. Again, BLT for micro are the spirochetes. Borrelia, Leptospira, and Treponema. But for CM, take note ha, na nakay, na nakay another BLT na po. Matini ha, sinasabi ko sa iyo. <laughs> you have bilirubin, leucine, and tyrosine. I remember pa kujug ko ato as in, like, I was so shocked. I miss those times good as in. Pila ko, sadya ganoon tayo face to face. But anyway, sige lang. Alright, BLT, no? Bili, bilirubin, uh, leucine, and tyrosine. The liver disorder crystals. Okay, so we'll start first with tyrosines. For tyrosine, as you can see, needles gapon yung appearance. It may be colorless, all right, or yellow, and even putting black. No, if yellow siya kung na ay apil na bilirubin. Okay, so it's found more often than leucine because it's less soluble than your um, leucine. All right, so asa siya makita and still liver disease and oast house urine disease. Di ba si oast house po? If you remember pa, siya ang na ay cabbage or odor na urine. Okay? Solubility, again, alkali or heat. Okay? So, tyrosine, again, it's, it's, it's elevated in patients and I severe liver disease or mga metabolic disorders such as tyrosinemia. Okay. All right. Next, of course, leucine. Ayan. For leucine, as you can see, iyahang appearance, circular, uh, concentric circles, meaning, na siya large circle, na po siya inner circle. Tapos, na siya'y radiations. Ayan, ganito. Ayan, radiation. Mara siya'y donut, charon. Radiation, okay? So, it can resemble fat droplets, pero it does not stain with uh, fat stains. It can be precipitated with alcohol uh, together with um, tyrosine. So, again, asa siya makitan, liver disease, MSUD, host house, urine disease. Again, solubility, hot alkali or alcohol. Again, na siya'y striations, dears, as you can see. Ayan, mara siya'y wheel, actually. Ayan, ganito. 
All right? Uh, nasa inner circle and then outer circle. All right? Concentric circles. Okay. Next, you have um, a possible look alike ni Leucine. All right? Wala na sa inyong notes, dears. Pero again, ako na i-post. We have what we call the 2,8-hydroxyadenine, dihydroxyadenine crystals. It is seen in patients with the enzyme deficient. Uh, adenine phosphoribosyl transferase. And kani siyang A APRT, if deficient ni siya, dears, it can affect the kidneys and urinary tract and it can uh, stimulate or it can lead to the production of kidney stones pa rin. So for patients na APRT deficiency, mas high sila risk to form kidney stones. Okay? And again, that's a possible look-alike or misidentification error ni Leucine. Your 2,8-dihydroxyadenine crystals. Take note of that. Okay? Kay na siya sa Brunzel. Wala siya sa Strasinger, ha? So, baka lumabas. Okay. Alright. Sige. Next, you have, of course, bilirubins to the same granules or needles shine appearance. And iyahang color is golden brown or bright yellow. And of course, correlate ka with chemical exam ni mo, chemical strip, positive siya sa si mohang reagent strip. Significance, again, is still your liver disease. Unsa gani na bilirubin? Nako, kani. Ang madetect na to sa si mohang urinary reagent strip, huwag na mag-isip, it's your conjugated. 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 Your B2. Nako, dears ha, take note of that. Ngano gani? Why? Why is it B2? Water soluble. Water soluble. Water soluble. Water soluble. Very good. Take note of that. Water soluble. All right. So that's for bilirubin. Again, the liver disorder crystals, BLT. Bilirubin, leucine, and tyrosine. Baka lumabas sa exam. Nigawas niya sa amuang... I think compre or RE before. Can I remember Juko? Kaya nasayop ko. Nalimot ko na. Hala, shucks. Apil bang 16 na to? Napil na ko siya. Okay? So take note, Han. Ano mo yung mnemonics? I gave you the mnemonics na. BLT. Do not forget. Very easy lang to remember. Ano mo yung mga experience? History with BLT. So, okay na. Alright? Bilirubin, leucine, and tyrosine. Okay. Next, of course, you have drugs or iatrogenic origins ng mga crystals. Number one is, of course, sulfonamide. So for sulfonamide, these are antibiotics. No? Initially, ang formulation sa sulfonamides, uh, they will precipitate. Ito mga first types of sulfonamides. Mo precipitate yun sila sa kidneys. Med munang deadly siya or da it can damage. Pero recently, ang mga recent formulations ay mong sulfonamide, dili na mo precipitate. So thank God. Okay? Alright. So these sulfonamide crystals, again, uh, it can be appearing as your needles, sheaves of wheat, mag nakatapok sila, nakabandol, eccentric iyang binding, meaning iyang pag-bind kay dili sa tunga or medyo off-center, uh, rosettes, arrowheads, or petals, and it can be mistaken as your calcium phosphate crystal. So how do we differentiate? Calcium phosphate, it's soluble in acetic acid, and for sulfonamide, you can perform your lignin test. So for lignin test, um, you just paper yung background, you add urine plus 25% HCl, you look for the change in color, dapat color yellow. Alright? And that's positive for sulfonamide. So, you have also sulfamethoxazole na crystals, which is a type of sulfonamide. Iyaha kay brown rosettes or spheres with irregular radiations. And again, the significance, possible tubular damage. Because again, the presence of these crystals in freshly voided urine indicates na ni precipitate na sila sa sulod palang daan sa tubules. And the precipitation of these crystals inside the tubules can cause damage to the tubules. Okay? Alright. And may deposit in your nephron. So here are some pictures. So kanisha dears ang sulfadiazine, as you can see, eccentric ihang binding, meaning dili equal ihang pagtunga. Sorry. As you can see, asa na to? Ayan. As you can see, mas dako ang right kaysa sa left. So, eccentric. Off-center. And here, example po, again, sheaves of wheat. Mura siya fan formation gya po. And then, these are the sulfamethoxazole crystals. You have sphere, irregular ang radiation. And kaning in ani, kaning mura fan, this is the sulfadiazine. So, sulfadiazine, sulfamethoxazole, these are the uh, types no, of sulfonamides. And ang, ang common, I think, is sulfamethoxazole, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? Alright. So, as you can see, pwede siyang rosette form. Mura siya flowers. Ayan. And pare siyang needles pa rin. So that's why pare siyang mistaken guild as um, calcium phosphate and other crystals na marag needles ra. Okay? Next, of course, you have ampicillin, which is antibiotic. So yeah, very important characteristic lang, dears, is it forms bundles or mas mudaghan siya after refrigeration. Okay? So colorless needles, pare as ani, before refrigeration, after na mas nidaghan. And then, of course, needles, no? Colorless needles that, to, that forms bundles, again, after refrigeration. So again, significance if 
dagan kay kang ginom na penicillin. All right? So that's an antibiotic. And the last is, of course, indinavir. Okay? Indinavir is an antiviral together with acyclovir. All right? And these crystals, again, will precipitate and may look like wings, ayan, or feather-like crystals, or rosette forms. Ayan. Pwede siyang mag-cross. Okay? So medyo mas baga siya, no? Na mga crystals. And again, it's more often observed in alkaline urine kaysa sa acidic. Okay? So, strongly biofringent po siya in polarizing microscopy. Alright? So, basta mga medications, dears, no? It's best good to stay hydrated. Inom ju kagdagang tubig para again to prevent uh, the precipitation of these crystals. Alright? But again, I think most of the drugs naman karon are less, ano na, less uh, insoluble. Oh. Yeah, mas less na siya mo precipitate, no? So that's good, okay? But it's best pa rin to drink a lot of water, especially if na may mga medications, all right? So how do you differentiate those needles, dears? Of course, uh, those needles, those crystals, especially those that appear like needles, of course, you look at the history, no? So if ang history sa patient naka-mention na nasa'y tambal, nag-iinom, like sulfonamide, indinavir, so possible na ang crystals yung mo nakita caused by those medications. Pero if wala, then possible na calcium phosphate rasha, so normal rasha na constituent, or other types of crystals. Okay? Alright, so here's a summary, dears. This is from graph. Ayan, so sa mga solubility properties. Okay? So ako lang yung ipost gyapon, don't worry. And this is from Branzel. Medyo mataas. Okay? Medyo mahaba, dears. Pero yan ang gi-explain yung dalita na. So it's very com comprehensive. Okay? Um, sige, yeah. Alright. Sige, ako lang yung include na po balik sa katong summary na notes siguro. Okay. Alright. Now, for the last part na lang, dears, happy nito mo man. Baka extend lang ta. Gamay lang yun. Alright. So, we have the hemosiderin granules. Your hemosiderin granules, we have mentioned this already in your blood chemical exam, no? In massive uh, episodes, no? Massive episodes of hemolysis, no? Um, hemoglobin, of course, in a hemolytic episode, of course, if dili kayo dagang hemoglobin, it will be saturated or it will be captured by your haptoglobin. But in cases of massive hemolysis, taas na kay hemoglobin, masaturate ang haptoglobin, dili niya kaya makuha ta ng hemoglobin. So what happens, hemoglobin will be filtered by the glomerulus and pag abot sa tubules, iya siyang i-reabsorb. Alright? And this hemoglobin will be denatured into ferritin into your renal tubules and will be and ferritin will be further uh, denatured to chemosiderin. And muna siya ang chemosiderin granules na itong makita. Alright? Uh, freely floating in your urine or possible po na attached to your RTEs or sa mga casts. Alright? And again, take note how many days mo appear ang imuhang chemosiderin granules after a hemolytic episode. Two to three days. Take note of that. How many days? Two to three days. And again, what is the test that we can perform? You have the Roose test or the Prussian blue reaction. Alright? So you look for blue granules floating or attached to casts or cells in your urine and that is your hemosiderin granules. We discussed that in your blood na chemical strip, okay, na reagent strip, okay? All right. Now we go na lang to the artifacts, of course, starting first with starch granules. The most common starch na ginagamit or mga contaminants sa urine is corn starch, okay? So asa man gikan, possible sa mga gloves na powdered, okay? Ayan. So as you can see, they they are not smooth, pwedeng um scallop tilahang ends, ayan, dili smooth and na siya dimple sa tunga. All right? Dimple sa tunga. And take note, it exhibits Maltese cross formation. Pero, iyahang Maltese cross formation is considered pseudo-Maltese cross. Because as you can see, iyahang kaning mga light dere, kaning mga white areas, or kaning Maltese cross, it's not even. Okay? Hindi siya equal. Hindi siya pareha sa mong cholesterol. All right? So, kinsa naman yung mga mo exhibit o uh, Maltese cross formation atong i-summarize for a mnemonic, you have O, F, F, S. Kinsa naman O? Oval fat bodies. Whew, okay. Oval fat bodies. F is for fatty casts. The other F is for fat globules or fat droplets. And the S is, of course, starch granules. Take note, kaning first, ang OFF, ay, only fan, sorry. <laughs> OFF, <laughs> OFF, dears, mumaltis cross na siya if ang ilhang composition kay cholesterol. Pero kung triglycerides, neutral fats, wala siya ay maltis cross formation. Pero kung cholesterol ang sulod sa OFF, okay, then it causes uh, maltis cross formation. Alright? And S, Starch granules. Mukos gitchag maltis cross. Pseudo maltis cross. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So that's for 
um, starch granules. Next, of course, oil droplets in cases na makontaminate lang sa immersion oil, no? Wala ni mo nagilimpiuhan before ka nag-examine, imong microscope. Highly refractile, may resemble RBCs, pero pag shift ni mo sa fine adjustment na medyo murag mo sidlak siya, murag, murag mo change siya o refractility. Air bubbles, of course, pag butang sa cover slip, no? Ayan, you all know that, ilang appearance. It may resemble RBCs, alright? Highly refractile pa rin, um, but again, artifact. Next, you have also uh, pollen grains, no? Mga seasonal contaminants, especially if dool mo og mga garden inyo ang la laboratory ganun so pollens yes and these are seasonal contaminants concentric circles pa rin and asha cell wall so same siya appearance sa leucine pero wala siya radiation no concentric circles okay and of course hair and fibers very important no very common good uh, it may it may it may be mistaken as your casts all right and take note how do you differentiate one of that is polarizing no your fibers will polarize light, whereas your casts will not polarize light, okay? And aside from that, the most co uh, most common source of your fibers, ma clothing, no? Clothing fibers. So here's an example. Ayan. So these are fibers na gikan sa diaper, all right, or sa clothing. As you can see, dear, ang sa tunga sa imuhang mga fibers, medyo thin siya lang tawon. Remember that imuhang cast, it's cylindrical, baga ang thick ang middle, all right, and ang edges kay medyo ni wang. So as you can see, ang edges po sa imuhang cast dapat lighter. As you can see, ang edges ani medyo dark, no? Darker in 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 appearance, all right? Uh, Kanipo siya, dear, more siya ghailin, pero as you can see, ni fold siya. So therefore, dili siya cylindrical, no? Okay. If cylindrical siya, dapat dili siya mo fold, okay? So this is a fiber pa rin. As you can see, ang sides po niya, uh, dili sa imuhang, nasa imuhang right, kay na mga nodules, dili siya smooth, so that's not also a cast. Uh, Kanipo siya, dear, as you can see, mura dito siya cast, no? Pero as you can see, kaning end niya, Dili siya circular or blunt. Na siya murag mga nodules pa rin or na mga murag buslot-buslot. Okay? So take note lang, dears. Again, the, the middle should be thicker than the, the sides and the sides should be lighter in color. Dapat dili siya dark edges. Okay? Dili dark edges. Okay? That's the difference between your fibers and your cast. Aside from that, high refractility. Ayan, as you can see, if you shift mo ang fine adjustment knob, pwede siyang mag-change in Mershag mag shine or mo change siya in ano, mo change siya in appearance. Ayan. And vegetable fiber, as you can see, uneven ang shape. Dili jud siya cylindrical. Alright. And yeah. So na siya mga, na siya po siya mga rough surface sa kilit. Alright. And lastly, fecal contamination. No, So for fecal contamination, there may be the appearance of your plant and neat fibers or mga brown amorphous material. Aside from that, there's uh, pathologic, there could be the rectovesical fistula. F-I-S-T-U-L-A. So what happens is yung bladder uh, kay nag-combine with the rectum. So therefore, ang tae pwedeng ma- uh, ma-introduce sa bladder. So therefore, na fecal contamination sa ihi. Aside from that, pwede po rectovaginal uh, fistula na combine ang rectum sa imuhang uh, vagina. So how do we confirm that? We let the patient ingest charcoal granules. Alright? So pag, pag ingest a patient of charcoal granules and then makakita sila of charcoal sa ihi, it means that uh, the patient has rectovesical fistula. Nag-combine niya hang uh, bladder o imuhang rectum. Alright? That's why na ay charcoal granules. Okay? That's for rectovesical fistula. Alright. So, last part lang, dears, is reporting. Ayan. So, for reporting of your sediments, remember, um, it's usually quantitated dyan siya. Quantitated for how many fields? At least 10 high-power fields. Alright? And according to Strasinger, di rin like quantitate si budding yeast, mycelial elements, trichomonas, and sperm. Pero mura siyang inote as Present or absent, okay? But again, remember, dear, that the reporting is institutional. Depending on the laboratory, they have their own methods, procedures, and protocols of reporting, especially mga sediment uh, sa urine. So here's an example lang. This is from Strasinger. And mo siya ginagamit sa mga review and sa board exam. So take note of mga numbers, no? So let's say, nag-examine ka o urine. So nagkita ka, let's say, nag-examine ka o RBCs, no? Uh, in your HPF, 10 ka high power fields. So let's say, sa first field, nakakita kag zero. Sorry. Sa second field, nakakita kag duha. Then one na po sa third. Uh, four. Da yun. Uh, five, let's say. And then zero na po. Six. Uh, let's say four. Da yun. Three. And then two. And then one. So therefore, how do you report that? So you start first with the lowest na imuhang nakita. So you have zero. Okay. And to the highest na imuhang nakita. Five. Zero to five per HPF. 
So depende ana. That's how you uh, summarize, no? So meaning per eight, per, per high power field there may be 0 to 5 RBCs na makitaan. Okay? All right. So depende siya sa imuhang lab and sa quantitation po. All right? Per generally that's how you quantitate. All right. Now summary na lang dears on how to report urinary sediments. Now don't be confused because I think this is from a different reference, Dilis Trasinger, pero gikan ni sa mong review notes para how we how we report. Kaya may mga questions such as uh, how do you report calcium oxalate crystals? How do you report um, mucus threads? Okay, so we'll start first with average number per 10 HPF. Okay, average number per 10 HPF. Nani siya sa you do notes po dears. On sa toang mnemonics for average number per 10 HPF. Sorry, let me check. Kailan limot ako. Ah, roar. Okay, atong mnemonics kay? Roar. R O. WR. Kung say meaning sa ROWR, RBCs, oval fat bodies, you have WBCs, and lastly, RTEs. Okay? Take note. Roar. ROWR. Roar, roar. Okay. Roar. Okay. Average number per 10 HPF. Next, average number per 10 LPF. Unsa sa mnemonics. Unsa sa mnemonics, average, you have cast crab. Okay? Cast crab. So, unsa na siya? Casts and abnormal crystals. Take note. Casts, abnormal crystals. Average per 10 LPF. Nain siya sa you do notes para ako nang gi-mention here. Next, we go now to semi-quantitative, mga descriptive uh, words. You have RF MOMA. Unsa yung meaning sa RF MOMA? Rare, few, moderate, many. Okay. RF MOMA. Rare few, moderate many. So RF MOMA per 10 LPF. Kinsa man RF MOMA per 10 LPF? Take note, you have, ito yung bastos na mnemonic. You have letter T, letter T, B, A, Y, N. So para mas wholesome, tata, tata ba yan. Pero if ganun kag mas medyo green, T, T, ba yan. Okay? Alright. So what does that mean? You have transitional, you have trichomonas. Ito, baka naglibog na mani, ha? You have bacteria. You have yeast. And N4, normal crystals. Alright? That's the mnemonic. Again, unsa na siya? RF MOMA. Rare few, moderate many per 10 LPF. Take note. So you have TT. <laughs> Ay, tata ba yan? Okay? And lastly, RF MOMA per 10 HPF. Kinsama na siya? You have you have um, I, LPF day. Sorry, I, sorry balik, balik tayo ni Deus Barisan. Pasensya. HPF day ni ha? HPF. HPF is tata ba? Yan. LPF, RF MOMA, you have mucus sex. Ay, bastos. Okay? You have mucus threads and squamous epithelial cells. Take note. Alright? So, if maglibog mo, kinsay LPF, kinsay HPF, remember lang sa appearance, sa imuha mga sediment. So, kung dako siya, like mucus threads, casts, um, squamous epithelial cells, of course, sa LPF na siya. Pero kung gagmay siya, bacteria, crystals, yeast, of course, dito na siya sa HPF. An an uh, exact na lang sa abnormal crystals. Kaya mo siya i-quantitate sa low power field. Okay? Alright. So again, take note of those demonics. Medyo bastos, pero pasensya na. Alright? Okay. Last na lang, uh, na mga parts. Again, you have here the summary of the sediments using Sternheimer Malbin. Uh, this is from a different reference, no? But again, akong gibutang po sa PowerPoint tung summary sa Strasinger. Napod sa Strasinger. So, familiarize the colors, dears. Glitter cells, take note sa yung color, pale blue. For leukocytes, pale pink. For hyaline, take note, it's pale pink. Okay, take note of that. All right. And lastly, cytodiagnostic urine analysis. So this is a procedure in which mugamit laka o uh, sediment sa ihi uh, produced by cytocentrifugation. So we'll discuss cytocentrifugation sa imuhang CSF. All right. So it's more on detecting malignancy. So what happens is you sediment the urine, makita ang mo mga cells. And what you do is you stain, ayan, you stain using Papa Nicolau stain. Or if walay Papa Nicolau, pwedeng right stain. Pero the best is Papa Nicolau. Alright? And again, para asa siya, more definitive information of renal tubular changes and makakita kag mga different cellular changes. Ayan. So it's more on cytologic studies. Okay? Alright. Detection of malignancies of the urinary tract. Alright? And that's the end. Yes! Whew. Pasensya medyo na extend. Ayan. That's the end for the microscopic. Alright? Okay? So, uh, before we end, um, any questions, dears?